University of Michigan football is brought to you by Stroh Signature, the beer with something extra. And by Burger King. Aren't you hungry for a delicious flame-broiled juicy Whopper at Burger King now? And by America's largest carpet retailer, New York Carpet World, the better carpet people. And by Highland Appliance, everything you never expected from an appliance store. And Republic Airlines, nobody serves our Republic like Republic. The capital of Wisconsin, Madison, and just a short distance away, Camp Randall Stadium, home of the Badgers of the University of Wisconsin. This afternoon, it's the Michigan Wolverines versus the Badgers. Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Lane, along with Jim Brandstetter and the Big Ten opener for both of these teams. And a real good one matchup, I mean, because Wisconsin comes in 2-0 after beating Missouri last week right here in Camp Randall. Michigan 1-1, one one, coming off a loss to Washington. So a big game for both teams to get them started on the right foot in the conference. And Wisconsin, it probably is more critical than it is for Michigan because this one could set them on their way to a conference championship. They're that good. They can play that well. And Michigan fans can remember 1981. <laughs> I don't think anybody could forget 81 when the Wolverines came in ranked number one in the country and Wisconsin knocked them off right here at Camp Randall. Uh, this place was shaking, rocking, and reeling. And after a game like that, you remember the next time you come back in here, Wisconsin could do it again. When you think of Wisconsin, at least in the early stages, you think of the fence. Defensively, historically, really, Ray, they've been ext extremely aggressive. This year, it's no different. Jim Melka is their inside linebacker, and with Carl Banks at Michigan State, Mike Bourne from Michigan, and Larry Station down in Iowa, he may be one of the best linebackers in the conference, if not the country, and Michigan offensively must block him in order to control the ball. What do you think of the Badgers' offense? You think of rushing before passing. You really do. Randy Wright's a great passer, but they have such an offensive weapon in Gary Ellerson, their tailback, number 41, that they got to use him. Michigan thinks they'll use him a little bit more. He's that good. He's a fullback size, but he's got tailback speed. He'll bleed yardage on you. Michigan defensively must stop him in order to control the game defensively. So Wisconsin's got some weapons on both sides of the ball that Michigan must contend with. They're a good football team. The opening kickoff in just a moment. said they had plans for me. Said I was crazy to throw it away to train horses. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. Glad I had my own plans. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. And here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh's signature is something extra. You have our name on that. You know New York Carpet World is America's largest carpet retailer, but you should also know we're the leader in no-wax vinyls. We're number one because of our fast delivery, our lower prices, and our famous brands like Congolium. Our selection's biggest and nobody beats our prices. For example, Congolium's sensational new Accent, no-wax vinyl flooring. It's $8.50 almost everywhere, but our everyday price is just $6.77 a yard. So for your kitchen, bath, or any room, the only place to shop is New York Carpet World. Introducing the amazing Renault Encore. Look how it feels with four wheels suspended independently for amazing cornering. And to see through a panoramic rear glass door. Look how the new Encore feels as it almost ignores gas pumps and offers interior space that's very flexible. For an amazing 5755, European design built in America. The new Renault Encore. Amazing. See the new 1984 Encore at your Detroit area Renault and American Motors dealers today. When I need to know, I tune to WWJ News Radio 95. News Radio 95. For all the news, anytime. News Radio 95. The one for all the news, all the time. The only one. But when I need to relax, it's beautiful FM 97. WJOI. FM 97 for easy listening, any place. FM 97. The easy place to relax. The only one. WWJ News Radio 95. WJOI FM 97. The only two to turn to in Detroit. First time of the 1983 collegiate football season, Jim, we have seen a ball club decline their option when they have won the toss of the coin. Exactly. The University of Wisconsin won the toss, but declined 
their choice until the second half. So Michigan chose to receive. Young man is Wendell Gladham who will handle the opening kickoff for the Badgers of Wisconsin. Also does a little field goal work. And the deep men back for Michigan on the right is Steve Johnson. Number 26 on the left was Giovanni Johnson. And the wind, a brisk 20 to 25 miles an hour coming out of the south. That means it'll be at the back of the Badgers as we open up this ball game. Already has done the damage blowing that ball off the tee. So glad I'm all set to kick off. And the Big Ten season for the University of Michigan and Wisconsin is underway. A squibber sailing with the aid of the wind right out of the end zone. No play, automatic touchback, no chance for Michigan. And the Wolverines will go on the attack for the first time this afternoon at the 20-yard line. A year ago, Michigan victorious over the Badgers, but as we talked about in our opener, the 1981, a loss here by Michigan. The offensive lineup on the line for the U of M Wolverines. The receivers and backs. And keep an eye on some of those receivers today. First and 10 for Michigan. And the handoff to the pullback. Moving straight ahead is Dan Rice. Rice getting maybe three or four yards. Let's check it. Greg Armstrong on the first carry. So Armstrong out of there. On defense, a talented defense. That one weighing just about 254 pounds, a very active linebacking group. Four on that carry by Armstrong will be second and six. And now a whistle. And movement by Michigan. That'll be a five-yard penalty assessed against the Wolverines on the second play of this ball game. It appears as though somebody lined up offsides and the referee immediately threw the flag and uh, Bo Schembechler called one of the officials over there immediately to find out what was going on as we finish up a look at the Wisconsin defense with a secondary that has really lost two great ones from last year but has done a great job this year. Second and 11. And nothing doing that time as they test the middle. And that middle headed up by Brad Pierce, the nose guard, making a big stop. Got to be careful in a situation like this. You're looking at third down and long now, right? And you're into a very strong wind. And when you're into a wind like that, a quarterback can pass the ball. That ball sometimes can float on him. And that's when you get interceptions. So they've got to run a pattern if they're going to throw for it. They've got to run a pattern that's going to be a quick one. Armstrong back in at fullback goes to that wing position on the left side. Smith back and looking. Nobody open. And tripped up at the 26-yard line. Moving up quickly was Ken Stills, a strong side safety. And they had a double safety in there. Two strong safeties, Walker and Still, along with a free safety. They'll do that on a passing situation. So Michigan forced to punt on fourth down. They need about four yards for that first down. What Don has done so far over the just barely at 39 yards. And this one ended the win with a very tough and the fair catch a signal for. And almost fell away. That was Merrill. Brian Merrill of Youngstown, Ohio, a senior, taking that one at the 45. 38 yards on the punt. So we've got a timeout. No score. I left a big company to turn my hobby into my living. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. I never was a company man. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. And here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh's signature is something extra. You have our name on that. 
Comerica introduces a new six-month certificate with interest that starts higher and is guaranteed to grow even higher than any six-month money market certificate. The new rising rate certificate. Deposit at least $10,000 before September 30th and you can beat the best rate of any 26-week certificate. Act now. Open your rising rate certificate or call us for complete information. Come to Opportunity. Come to Comerica, where the future lives. The Badgers going to work with Randy Wright, their talented quarterback, number 12. Tune in motion. And the pitch to Ellerson. And he's got plenty of daylight. Cuts back in and tripped up around the 12-yard line. Otherwise, it had six points. Ray, they caved the entire left side of the Michigan defensive line down. Ellerson made the move outside, and really, it wasn't any big thing. Everybody's caught up inside. Bourne is caught up inside. Armstrong makes the block. There's the block by Harrison, and Ellerson just uses his speed down the sideline. He may have made a mistake here cutting back, because that's where he came back into the pursuit, and Lott had enough to stop him and knock him down at the 12. 42-yard carry for Ellerson. First and 10 at the Michigan 12. Uh, Wisconsin knocking on the door. Oh, he's straight ahead, the fullback, Harrison. Harrison, one that you'll not see carry a lot in the ball game, will complement mostly the blocking back for Ellerson. And picks up about three yards. Wisconsin's offense, 250-pound average across that line. And talented receivers, they say probably the second best offensive threat the Badgers have, those yeah. receivers. Al Toon is one of the best in the conference at that wide-out position for the Badgers. Ellerson again, and finds another hole, and in the score. Nine yards on the carry for the touchdown. And a Badger striking early. Well, it's, it's nothing impressive, only the fact that they're blocking Michigan so well because Ellerson on both gains into the end zone, uh, the 32-yarder and now this touchdown, he was just uh, had big holes to run through. The lead back is Harrison, the fullback, but Ellerson finds the hole back up inside, and he's able to cut in there and make the touchdown. It's just well blocked. That's why the play worked. Kevin Rohde, number 11, will check in to try for the extra point as the Badgers move 54 yards in only three plays. And took only a minute and 15 seconds to accomplish that. Rohde with that strong win behind him is perfect for the extra point. And with 11.41 to go in the opening quarter, Wisconsin 7, Michigan nothing. Burger King presents a friendly conversation. Another battle of the burgers, huh? Well, not really. The Whopper beat the Big Mac? That's old news. Flame broiling beat frying. That was last time. Well, now I suppose you're going to say that thousands of people have switched from other places to Burger King. Of course not. That's a relief. Actually, it's millions of people. Aren't you Burger King now? Was it something I said? Pontiac has created a driver's car the whole family can enjoy. Pontiac 6000. Enjoy the styling. Enjoy the room. Enjoy the handling. Pontiac 6000. Enjoy. The front wheel drive 6000. Only from Pontiac. We build excitement. Gladham all set to kick off for Wisconsin and the 75,000 plus here got something early to cheer about for Wisconsin. Giovanni Johnson can handle it deep in the end zone and it gets out of there off the fingertips. So again, Michigan will start it out from its own 20-yard line. The story on that scoring drive by Wisconsin in the early stages of this ball game. And there you can see the importance, I guess, of the first time we saw the team that won the toss turning down their option. 
they figure Michigan will elect to receive. So they take the win. They hold Michigan for one first down, get real good field position, and go in and score. Double tied in there for Wolverines with Carthens and Nelson. And Rodgers, the first time on a carry, picks up close to four yards and then driven back. Well, you talk about following the flow, and that's exactly the type of defense you'll see from the Badgers. Absolutely. Their defensive linemen line up off the ball. They're called a reading defense. They'll line up about a yard back, and they'll really flow toward the action of the backfield, which means Michigan might run some misdirection plays in order to negate that. But Wisconsin defensively will flow to the ball as well as any team that Michigan plays all year, and they'll gang tackle as well as you see anybody. They have a lot of people at the ball when that carrier has got it. Nelson slipping over on that left side is tied in. And Rodgers, what a misdirection play and going no place, just about back to the line of scrimmage. Brannaman in there to make the stop, and he is the nose guard, and you'll see the Badgers use three very active nose guards from time to time. Brannaman's one of them. Brad Pierce is the other, and Michael Boykins, a freshman, is the other. That was Michigan's misdirection play to try to negate that reading defense and flowing defense. The problem was they didn't block him at the point of attack. You got to throw blocks down there in order for a play to work. Dolores out of there. DiOrio the now at the guard position for Michigan. And Smith on the draw has the first down close to the 33, the 37 yard line. That was a straight quarterback draw. And it really works well against the team that is coming and that is aggressive. You'll see everybody is just really loading up inside. They just spread them out, push them to the outside. There's a good block on fields by Greg Armstrong, the fullback. Another good block by Dixon, the center, on Melka. And that allowed Smith on the draw to get the first down yardage. Smith has picked up 20 yards on a couple of carries here. Michigan trailing 7 0 with 9.55 to go in the first quarter. The option play, and Smith elects to hang on close to the 39-yard line and feels the linebacker in there to make the tackle. You know, Michigan's running that option play in there. It could very well work, but they had penetration from the tackle, and Steve had to get outside him, and then the end was upfield far enough to take away the pitch back, and that's why that play didn't go as well as it could have. They can allow penetration at the tackle spot. You've got to block him in order for that option play to work. Got a yard out of it. Second down and I. Double wing this time. No, wing to the left. Double tight end. And Garrett straight ahead. Quickly getting the line of scrimmage and still fighting with that second effort into Badger territory close to the 46-yard line. Ken Stills, a strong safety. Young man out of Oceanside, California. A J.C. transfer, this first year with the Badgers, making a stop of 14 yards on the carry for Garrett. Talk about the flowing defense. You saw Stephon Humphreys come across on a, on a trap play, and he trapped their down tackle. And the reason that play went well is because they flow so well, they read to the ball, a quick hitter up the middle can work. Rodgers and Garrett, the running backs. Rodgers getting a good block from Humphreys. Moves into the secondary inside the 35. And still again coming up to make the stop. Belford, the free safety, also coming over to help out Stills on that tackle. Stefan Humphreys, number 76, coming outside, turns up inside the hole. Now, Rick Rogers is the guy that makes that play because the hole was opened up. Stefan did a good job turning up inside the hole and kicking out on the back that was coming over from his cornerback position, but that was well blocked at the point of attack, and that's how to beat a team that flows defensively. At the Wisconsin 33, first and 10, and Kerry Smith carrying, tripped up there by Fields, avoided his block and made the stop. Now well, that's called an isolation play. The hole was there, the fullback is one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. Now, on that play, Eddie Garrett the fullback has got to make the block on the linebacker, and then the tailback has to cut off that block. That time, the fullback stuffed Eddie Garrett in the hole. Kerry Smith tripped over him. Now Garrett goes out, and Armstrong checks back in. And Armstrong in that wing on the right side, and now goes in motion. Second and nine. Kerry Smith trying to get outside, can't do it. 
You talk about gang tackling. You saw a great example that time by the Badger defense. But one of the other things and why a play doesn't work is there was a missed assignment. The fullback, Greg Armstrong, number 34 in motion, is out there in front. You can't see him, but right at the top of your screen, he'll miss the block right there on Ken Stills, number three. And that really is what hurt the play, because then Kerry Smith couldn't turn it up inside, and everybody was coming from the outside. Fields, Malcolm, and Harrington all on that tackle. That has been the first loss of Kerry Smith in his collegiate career. Third down and 11. Passing situation for the Wolverines. Smith rolling to the right, looking for somebody and found somebody in the open. Sim Nelson picking up where he left off in the first half last week, and again, Stills in there to make the tackle. And Sim Nelson was wide open. One of the reasons that's a pass play off the counter play action look. Sim Nelson coming out of the game. No, he's coming back into the game now. No, he's going back out of the game. Looked like he hurt his back a little bit on that dive to make the catch. The reason the play went, one of the reasons was, is that counteraction play action that Michigan showed. Wisconsin didn't have anybody to cover the tight end because that held the linebacker. Wolverines got a first down, first and 10 at the Badger 22. Kerry Smith got a lot of daylight up the middle and just across the 15 yard line. Ray, that's the play that Michigan ran earlier called isolation, where the fullback must block the linebacker one-on-one. -on -one. In that instance, Eddie Garrett, who missed the block earlier on the fullback, that time got the block, and Kerry Smith followed him through the hole for good yardage. Kerry has carried now three times, picked up a total of six yards. Second down, and they mark it at the 15, so it'll be second down and three to go for the first. Garrett and Smith and Kerry Smith on the carry close to the 10 yard line around the 11 should be very close to the first down Merrill the cornerback on the left side making the hit and it's going to be enough for the first down it'll be first and 10 from the 11 yard line the fifth first down in this drive by the Wolverines that started at their own 20. And Ray, the key to the whole thing, as Dave McClain, I'm sure, is well aware, is the fact that Michigan up front is blocking the Wisconsin down linemen, and they're knocking Melka and Fields, their inside linebackers, out of the way. That is the key to running against this team. Steve Smith, the quarterback, with Garrett and Kerry Smith behind him, Armstrong in motion. Kerry Smith across the 10 and then shoved back. Well, I think you talked about the key is trying to blow out a couple of those very active linebackers. Malka and Fields in the middle, Harrington on the outside, and Rick Graff on the other side. Those are four real good linebackers. Malka's outstanding. The other three are very good. So as a group, they're about as good as you're going to see in the conference. Harrington getting credit for the initial hit on Kerry Smith. The ball at the 10-yard line. So it'll be second down and nine. The Wolverines could pick up a first down at the one-yard line. Big pitch. And nothing to it. That'll be ruled incomplete. The official down there saying it was not a loose ball. Ruled the ball was dead. But there, you can see Steve Smith in frustration looking for somebody, and all he saw was a red jersey in front of him. Came with a blitz from the outside. Now watch Smitty. He'll fake play action, hold the linebackers, but here comes Stills, who is on a blitz. Smith's arm's moving forward, and the ball pops free. I think the referees ruled that his arm was moving forward, and it was a pass. It's a real tight situation on the rules, but if they want to call it that, you know, they can interpret the fact that his arm was in a forward motion, so it could be an incomplete pass. And that means it's third and nine, still at the 10-yard line for the Wolverines. The official referee is John Neal, and the flag goes down. Dave McLean has certainly turned the program around here for the Badgers. This is a sixth year, and there was motion by the Wolverines. Well, those are the kinds of mistakes you can't afford when you're down close. I mean, you've got third down and nine to go uh, for the first down, 10 for the touchdown, and now you got yourself a penalty takes you back to the 15-yard line. The only positive thing that Bo Schembechler might look and see out of this penalty is the fact that 
now his receivers have a little bit more room to work with in the end zone from 15 yards out. But I think we're going to see a blitz. Second penalty against the Wolverines for a total of 10 yards. Steve Smith looking for somebody. And intercepted in the end zone and run out by Morrow. Brian Morrow gets close to his own two-yard line. The pass looked as if it was intended for Nelson. I think the pass was thrown in a bad spot, Ray. The fact is, is that Nelson had three defenders around him. Steve was getting some pressure from the outside. Steps up into the pocket, and again, here we are, into the wind. That ball floats a little bit. It gets over the head of Nelson and into three other people, and they're all red jerseys. And Merrill comes up with the interception. Well, you can go back a week ago at the University of Washington, and when the Wolverines were knocking on the door in the first half and didn't get anything to show for it, second example we've seen already this year. First and ten at the Badger two-yard line. And jumping across for Michigan, Al Sanchez. We'll wait and see if there was some movement by the offensive unit of the Badgers. Nope, against Michigan. And that's an easy five yards. You, again, mistakes down close. Offensively, they get an illegal procedure call. And now defensively, they get an illegal procedure call. And you'll see Sensich just jumps. And that's, I guess, offsides. The fancy word is encroachment. First and five. And moving straight ahead this time on a fake was Mark Harrison. Mallory in there to make the hit on him. Got just across the 10-yard line, close to the 11. Needs a couple of yards yet for the first down. But I'll tell you one thing, on the running play, you'd rather be at your seven to start out than rather the two. And first and five is a lot easier to make <laughs> than first and 10. Second down and a long one. Randy Wright at quarterback. Ellison on the carry. And slips off a couple of the would-be tacklers. And should be very close, if not having the first down. Cochran moving up to block that hole. But Brooks and Mallory are in there first. And a good play also by Mike Bourne over there, who took on the fullback and really closed the hole. But again, we talked about Ellerson's power. He came here as a wide receiver moved into fullback and he was a very big strong tough fullback now he's at the tailback spot and he's got enough speed as we saw in that 42 yard carry carried three times for 53 yards so far first first and 10 for the badgers not the 13. harrison not going any place that time almost looked as if it was a cross buck pattern and he was greeted right there by sentient and brooks brooks really is the guy to haul him in Again, you watch penetration. The middle guard, Sinsich, steps around. He's into the backfield. There's a guard pulling, but here comes Brooks from the other side. Nobody touched him. He beat his block simply, and that's the way the play was stopped. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Badgers after 11-yard line. 7 nothing. Badgers on top with 2.34 to go in the opening quarter. And a break for the University of Michigan. As Ellerson did not have control of that ball once he took the handoff. And the recovery on a very jubilant Carlton Rose. I think you, 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 you spotted it right, Ray, is the fact that Ellerson never had the ball. And Michigan now has a chance in the first quarter with 2.29 left to score. They trail Wisconsin 7 nothing. Dear Republic Airlines, I travel four or five days a week, and I fly about once a day. Brad Holt is a sales representative from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It's a pretty lonely job sometimes out on the road. That's why treatment others take for granted is important to me. If I could get the kind of royal treatment I get on Republic from the other airlines, I probably wouldn't be in such a hurry to get home. Every year, Republic gets thousands of letters that really say the same thing. Nobody serves our Republic like Republic. 
WMJC, good morning. You're on the air with Jeff and Jerry. Is uh, Gloria there? Good morning. Uh, say, Roberta. Yeah, Bill. Hey, the phone's ringing here. I can't believe what you guys said. Well, good morning, Reverend Dollars. Oh, good morning, boys. Jeff and Jer, mornings on magic. If you're not listening, you're not laughing. Rogers, the running backs, first and ten for the Wolverines at the ten-yard line. Rogers, more daylight, close to the two-yard line. Rick Graham making a hit and a tackle, but Rogers took him a couple of yards after the initial hit. And that again was the isolation play. When you say isolation, you talk about the fullback isolating one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. The linemen do not block that linebacker. That's up to the fullback. Two out of three times Michigan has run it, it has worked. The fullback has blocked the linebacker, and the tailback has made good yardage. They move it back to the three. Second and three. Blitz was on. Rodgers got away. Might have the room, and bulls his way into the end zone for a touchdown. A sign of a great running back when he put the head down, needed the extra yard, and made it. You know, that was a great play by Rick Rodgers because they come with a blitz, and they don't block it. Eddie Garrett, the fullback, Armstrong, rather, blocks that blitzing man. Now, Rodgers sees the whole closed up inside with his speed he gets outside he sees support coming he lowers his head levels it off and really bulls his way for the last yard that they needed good run by Rick Rogers Rick Rogers third touchdown of the season Slopey back for the extra point and he's got it so with 150 to go in the first quarter Michigan seven Wisconsin seven a big drive offensively for Michigan in the sense that Wisconsin held them down close, Ray, and then Michigan's defense came up with the big play, the turnover. It was something that Bo Schembechler was upset about last week, that on Washington's last two drives, the Wolverines never did come up with the big play defensively. In this instance, they did, and here's the result. There's the block by Armstrong on the blitzer. Rodgers kicks it outside because he knows it's closed up inside. Then when he sees the support, he levels it off. He knows that the goal line is where he's got to get, and he just runs over the defensive back that came up to try to make the stop. Real good running by Rick Rodgers, and a confidence builder for the Wolverines after having gotten stopped down inside the Wisconsin 10 on their previous possession, and a confidence builder for the defense to come up with the fumble and make the big play to get the offense in position to score. Well, the turnover by the Badgers, only their second of the 1983 season. And as one of the papers said here today, in headlines, Badgers must avoid mistakes. And that mistake at the 10-yard line on the fumble recovery by Michigan, allowing the Wolverines to tie up the ball game at 7-7 with a minute and 50 seconds to go. I'm Ray Lane along with Jim Brandstetter. We're very glad you could join us on the Wolverine Sports Television Network this afternoon. Dodge Slopey all set to go back. And single safety man to handle the kickoff is Marvin Neal. Deep man back, number 22. End of the win, and Neal goes about six or seven yards back into the end zone. He looks not to run it out. So the Badgers will bring this one out to the 20-yard line. That's a real good kick by Slopey into the win. He kept it low, a line drive end over end kick, and that really helps Michigan because now Wisconsin's got trouble as far as their field position is concerned. A story on that brief drive by Michigan. A couple of plays in only 29 seconds. They'll slot their split in tune to the left side along with Jones. Two wide receivers on the left out of that eye formation and send now tune in motion. Harrison got a couple of yards that hole opened up and then all of a sudden was closed in a hurry but they did a good block that time on Sunshine and Bourne moved up quickly to make the hit surprising a little bit I think Ray that Wisconsin has gone with their fullback and tailback primarily as their runners because they have Toon they have Marvin Neal out on the outside they're real good receivers Jeff Nault the tight end is another outstanding receiver 
And Randy Wright can throw the ball. They were successful throwing last week against uh, Missouri. And I'm surprised with the wind, we haven't seen him throw a pass yet. Four carries for their fullback for a total of eight yards. Again, Tune in motion. And looking to pass now. And Tune out of bounds and coming back in bounds and really smothered on the coverage that time by Michigan. Something we did not see a week ago at Washington. No, we saw Michigan's defensive secondary giving receivers a lot of room. On that instance, Brad Cochran played it very, very tough. He had Tune outside, and what he did was he just stayed right with him. He bumped him. He bumped him out of bounds. Tune had to reroute the pattern and come back inbounds. That's the kind of defensive play Michigan needs from their secondary because last week against Washington, they were too soft, and they, uh, you know the story of that one. Splitting their backs this time with Harrison and Ellerson. And Tune on that slot on the left side. That's one of the receivers along with Jones. Third and eight. A lot of time. And a good move that time by Michigan. As off the fingertips of Evan Cooper and Gant coming up there to take that interception. Tony Gant's playing a safety. There, Michigan's in a zone. And, and Randy right through this ball. He's got the wind with him. And again, the wind, I think, carries this a little too far. Uh, as opposed to floating it into the wind, this one floats on the wind. And it's overthrown over the middle. And here is what the tip drill pays off. Before practice, you see these kids play tip drill. And here's one tip by Cooper. Lott then gets a chance at it. He tips it twice. Now watch Tony Gant, number 14. He's still coming, still got his eyes on the ball, makes the interception. Michigan gets another break. A little volleyball contest down there, but it pays off for the Wolverines, first and 10. And struggling a heart in the 45-yard line is Rice on his first carry. No, Rice should have enough for the first down. Belford. A free safety. And Ray, I think we're seeing a bit of a pattern develop in that Michigan is hitting Wisconsin between their their linebackers. And as we talked about their defense flowing so well, Michigan's backs are now beginning to cut it back over the hole so that they're actually running behind where the hole is. That's a pattern we'll probably see stay there all day. First and ten at the 46 of the Badgers. And a change of fullbacks that time. Garrett carrying that time. As we've seen all three fullbacks in this ball game in the first quarter. Down to 24 seconds in the first quarter. And as we see the fullbacks carry the ball inside and Michigan bleed yardage through there, you've got to think that pretty soon Wisconsin's going to have to tighten up inside and Michigan will go outside with the option. Garrett on three carries, a total of 18 yards. Second down and seven for the Wolverines. And the option play, Steve Smith trying to cut back against the grain, gets across the 40 to the 39. Go the other side. And we got about three yards out of the carry. And they mark it back a little bit down to one second, and that's it. That's the end of the first quarter. Michigan 7, the Badgers of Wisconsin 7. Well, Gerald, it's almost time for Highland Super Sale. Let's see, the Johnsons are here. The Willans? Wait a second, where are the Krupples? Announcing Highland Super Sale, a sale where every price on every item is marked down so low, some people won't let anything stand in their way to get there. Can't understand it, the Krupples missing this sale? Right? Gee, I wonder if they forgot. Right now, this Sansui 30-watt digital receiver is just $146, save $43. And this sharp 7-day programmable video recorder, just $417, save $182. So, no matter how you get there, get there. Gerald, we can't wait any longer. Mr. Kreppel! But where's Mrs. Kreppel? Highland Super Sale, now through Tuesday. Honey, the microwaves are over here, see? The great cars of Europe priced far out of reach until now.
Renault presents The Road to Affordability. Renault Alliance, Motor Trend's 1983 Car of the Year, with sedan comfort for five and their luggage. Fuel efficient, fuel injected, European technology that's affordable. 59.59, Renault Alliance, built in America. See the exciting 1984 Alliance at your Detroit area Renault and American Motors dealers today. Burger King presents The McDonald's, an unusual interview. Is it true all of you switched to Burger King? Yes! How come? Bacon double cheeseburger. Flame broiling. The Whopper. French fries. Being McDonald's, you must take a lot of ribbing. Yes, we can't show our faces anywhere anymore. Would you advise everyone to switch to Burger King no matter what their name is? You bet. You bet. Okay, America. Now when you switch to Burger King, you can tell them... The McDonald's thank you! We talk about the active pullbacks for the Wolverines in that first quarter. The pullbacks on five carries, picking up a total of 32 yards. Right now, as we begin the second quarter, it's third down and four to go for the Wolverines at the 40 yard line, just inside the 40 yard line of the Badgers. So, Rogers now, number 20, in that wing position on the left side. The lone back is Garrett. And Smith going to Nelson at the 30-yard line. Rabo is in there to make sure he stayed down. And this is one-on-one -on -one coverage. Linebacker on a tight end. And Sim Nelson simply runs right by Brabo. You see him two yards behind him. And Sim tries to cut back, loses his footing. But the key was he had enough yards for the first down. And Michigan gets a big third down and four completion from Steve Smith. And Ray, big key here in the second quarter, Michigan has the win at their back. Garrett back in there at fullback. They go with Rodgers, first and 10 at the 30. And Rodgers on the carry. Boy, they're getting a good hole up front, and all of a sudden it's closing, but the backs of Michigan have been able to get a couple of steps on that line. Melka making a stop the linebacker. And a five-yard gain on that carry for Rodgers. And any offense in the world uh, doesn't complain at all on a first down runoff tackle that gains five. The other thing Wisconsin doing defensively now is gambling a little bit more in that the fact that was a first and ten play. They came with a blitz from the outside. Michigan caught him in it and hit him inside the tackle. Second and five for the Wolverines. And going straight ahead, Rice that time. Enough for the first down. And Harrington, the outside linebacker, who just checked back in, making the tackle. Now, this is power football, Ray. They're just banging it away inside the tackle and, uh, and guard. And they're really running right at those two inside backers, Melka and Fields. And yeah. I think they're doing a good job. They're blocking the people up front. Uh, anytime you can average five yards a time on the ground, that's all right. I'll take it. 7-7 ball game early in the second quarter. Michigan has dominated, really, running 23 plays in the opening quarter to Wisconsin's 10. On the option, Smith looks to keep it, and a couple of good turns by Steve gets him down to the 15-yard line, and again, the fellow that we think is certainly their best defensive player in Wisconsin, Milka, making the stop. Yeah, Steve might have pitched that one out to Rick Rogers. He might have gotten a little more yardage out of it, but again, with a flowing defense, one of the things that is successful is cutting the ball back behind the pursuit. When you come out on that option, Steve Smith is so quick, Wisconsin wants to get out there as quick as they can to stop him along the perimeter. He can cut that back up inside behind the pursuit and make some big plays. I saw what he had been doing passing. He's carried five times. And now he has second and six. Nice catch by Rogers. Not enough for the first down. A nice play by Fields in there, preventing any further gain once the reception was made by Rodgers. Right at the 11-yard line, need a couple of more yards for the first down. Similar play to that third and four that he hit Sim Nelson on. This time they lined up Rodgers at a wing back. He's isolated one-on-one -on -one with Fields, but Fields does a good job of coverage. He's right on him. Rick might have gotten down the field a little bit more. A little extra blocking in there with Garrett. Rice, Armstrong, Armstrong in motion, and Garrett across the 10, very close to the first down, and they'll mark it down inside the nine, should be enough for it, Johnson, the cornerback on the right side coming up 
to make the stop. First down, Michigan. Interesting uh, in that that's the first time we've seen Michigan run with two fullbacks as their running backs. Usually you see Kerry Smith or Rick Rogers in there, but they had Armstrong and Rice. And Garrett. And Garrett was at the wing. Yep. Man, they didn't have a, they, they had three tight ends in the backfield. <laughs> you were talking about power football. They oh. can't get much more powerful. No, not with three 220-yard pound backs in there that most of the time are blocking. All right, make it first and goal for the Wolverines. A chance to go out and from this ball game with 11.45 to go in the first half. A 7-7 ball game. Steve Smith on the option. And Rogers in the score. Give a great deal of credit to Milt Carthens, the tight end. He came off his tight end position and went down and had to block a defensive back. 83. He'll run by the end. Now, here's the pitch. Now, Rodgers has room. Now, watch. By the time Rodgers gets the ball at the 10, there's Carthens right there, still blocking Merrill number 15. That is a great block by Milt Carthens, the tight end, to allow Rodgers to really get in and score that touchdown. Slopey in there to try for the extra point. Now one this afternoon, trying to make it two. He's got it. Nope, they say he's missed it. He misses it with the wind at his back. And so with 11.35 to go in the second quarter, it's Michigan 13, Wisconsin 7. Hey, guys, I'm back. Catch you anything, Riley? Yeah, I caught this granddaddy of a fish. But when I got him in the boat, he says, I'll give you three wishes if you throw me back. A talking fish? Well, it was hot. I was thirsty, so I wished for a nice cold Stroh's beer. And there it was. Mmm. Tasted so good, I wished for another one. Two wishes, two Stroh's. And what'd you do with the third wish? Hey, would I forget my friends? <laughs> From one beer lover to another, Stroh's. When I need to know, I tuned to WWJ News Radio 95. News Radio 95. For all the news, anytime. News Radio 95. The one for all the news, all the time. The only one. But when I need to relax, it's beautiful FM 97. WJOI. FM 97 for easy listening any place. FM 97. The easy place to relax. The only one. WWJ News Radio 95. WJOI FM 97. The only two to turn to in Detroit. Well, Shlopey now, as far as the extra point department is concerned, after missing that one, now six for eight for the season. You get a good break here with a strong wind of close to 25 miles an hour at his back. Marvin Neal, waiting back at the goal line for Wisconsin. And he likes not try to handle it. So the Badgers will bring it out to the 20-yard line. And the Wolverines leading now by a score of 13 to 7. And the first time this afternoon, the Maize and Blue with the lead. And it has been two turnovers that has really helped Michigan. The interception, of course, leaving, uh, leading to this drive. Taking only four minutes and 21 seconds to pick up the six points. Now we talk about the fine job that Dave McLean has done at the Badger program, football program here, now in his sixth year and coming in this ball game. With 31 wins for Wisconsin and 28 losses and a couple of ties. And taking his team to the Independence Bowl a year ago. First and 10 Badgers at their own 20. Randy Wright to Ellerson. And flags go down. He had Harrison, the fullback, out in front. And uh, moving up quickly for Michigan to make the hit, the police. And I think we got some holding there inside because two flags flew right into the middle where that that sweep was going. And it looked like Rodney Lyles or Carlton Rose, one of the two, was getting tackled by two people. As we learned about the Badgers' offense this year, it's described by the Michigan people as not fancy. against the Badgers. And uh, another key to that play outside of the penalty is the fact that Gary Ellerson, Wisconsin's fine running back, limped off the field. Uh, we watch him on the sidelines and he's limping slightly. He's getting no treatment. He probably just got banged up a little bit and he'll be back in the game because the trainers aren't even looking at him. Well, they'll bring it back now to the 10-yard line of the Badgers. 
Well, that's a call that we were looking for a week ago out on the West Coast. <laughs> yep. Wisconsin, uh, rather, Washington threw the ball 38 times and didn't get one holding call. And uh, talking to the coaches this week after viewing the films, Ray, apparently the officials missed some. <laughs> Number 20, McFadden, youngster out of Flint, Michigan, with the Badgers in there replacing Tune in the lineup out of Beecher High School in Flint. Little delay play that time. some speed in that Badger backfield. Mark Harrison, the fullback at time, showed real good speed getting to the outside. The play was there. The draw play looked real good. He'd have probably gotten a lot more yardage, but he made a big cut going out to the sideline. See Michigan coming wide open from the outside, expecting the pass. They get blocked, and here's the cut that Harrison makes, and he can't keep his footing. If he'd have gotten outside, there's a lot of room for him. Second down and 13 for the Badgers. At their own 17. This time they use the tailback. That's Emery. Going no place, but we're going to get a flag. And then they're De police again to make the initial stop. Ray, they're calling a face mask, and this might be the similar call to last week when we saw a player make a tackle by the shoulder pad. He's up in the head area and moving as fast as they do. The official doesn't see the hand get the shoulder pad. He looks at the, the, the runner's head coming around, and you can see that Bo doesn't like it because I think he was right next to the play and saw that the, the, the tackler, I think it was Hassel on that side, didn't get a hand on the face mask, but rather got the shoulder pad and brought him down. And taking only five yards, and so not the intentional penalty where they could mark it off as a major and give you 15 yards on it. So it's second down, and now eight. Well, the down box does not turn over on it. And again, a little delay, and Harrison has the first down, and another flag goes down. Using the short side of the field that time on a slant, Cochran in there to make the tackle. The other thing that is happening is that there's a holding call against Wisconsin. It might have been on number 20, Thad McFadden, who came through there and was blocking on Tom Hassel. It's one of the things that there was speculation about earlier in the week of moving Tom Hassel from his outside spot to an inside linebacker position in, in passing situations. On that instance, that's what happened. Hassel was inside, and McFadden came out to block him. Hassel took on the block, but McFadden wrapped an arm up, and now Wisconsin is back at second down and 11, and pretty soon we're going to get four downs out of these guys. <laughs> A story on this ball game with 10 minutes to go in the first half. And a second down and 11 for the Badgers. The site, Camp Randall Stadium here on the campus of the University of Wisconsin in Madison, Wisconsin. Slot tune, the wide receiver on the left side. They've got two ready to fly on this. And going no place. As Michigan's defense real well, Sunset would have no part of that one. Well, the draw play hurt him earlier. This time, Sinsich did not do that runaround technique that middle guards sometimes use. He went right straight through his blocker, straight up the field. When Harrison was given the ball, Sinsich was there to say hi, and Harrison had no place to go. Now they're really in a deep hole with third down and 15. And again, Ray, look inside, see if Hassel's in there at the inside spot. This time he is not. Ellerson back into the lineup for Wisconsin, and I think the Badgers took too long to get that play off. One of the things that is happening is that Michigan defensively is throwing a lot of different looks at the Badger offense. That forces Randy Wright into calling some audibles and changing pass patterns. When that happens, the audibles take time. If they don't get to the line of scrimmage soon enough, you can get a delay of game, and that's the situation there. 
You were talking about Tom Hassel. Hassel now checks in, and Carlton Rowe checks out at one of the linebacker spots. But Hassel is, is, is breaking out wide, and uh, he'll be in coverage rather than on the inside for Mallory. It is third down and 20 for the Badgers at their own 10-yard line. Ellerson finds a little running room, but it closes up in a hurry. Boren in there to make the tackle right around the ankle. Tommy Hassel got in there, too, Ray. He came right up, and Ellerson saw Hassel coming. And I think Gary Ellerson figured, I better go down, and I don't want to meet this guy again. So the Badgers finally turn it over to where it's fourth down. And 15. Winslow back for the punt. The line of scrimmage right at the 15. He's back to his, close to his goal line. And just manages to get away. Pretty good punt. Sending Cooper back to his 42-yard line. So they've got a timeout with 7.51 to go in the first half. It's Michigan 13, Wisconsin 7. Burger King presents a friendly conversation. Another battle of the burgers, huh? Well, not really. The Whopper beat the Big Mac? That's old news. Flame broiling beat frying. That was last time. Well, now I suppose you're going to say that thousands of people have switched from other places to Burger King. Of course not. That's a relief. Actually, it's millions of people. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? Was it something I said? Millions of Americans are so intimidated by our legal system, they don't get a lawyer even when they need one. At Hyatt Legal Services, we make getting an experienced lawyer as easy as coming to one of our convenient offices. You can discuss your problem with an attorney for only $20. And we have standard fees for cases like divorce, bankruptcy, and wills. At Hyatt Legal Services, personal service at reasonable fees is how we make the system work for you. Call the Hyatt office nearest you or 756-4000 for an appointment. This time, the Wolverines are not aided by a turnover by the Badgers. See what they can get going at their own 42-yard uh, 42 42 line. First and 10. A fake to Garrett, and Smith rolling outside. Almost got enough for the first down, maybe shy by about a yard. Option play into the sideline, and see how they fake to that fullback that holds the linebackers, and Smith is able to clear the corner and get around for nine yards. The key to the play is that little reverse handoff fake. Those linebackers cannot flow until they see that fullback doesn't have the ball. But by the time Smith starts down the line of scrimmage, it's too late. Wolverines need a yard. Rodgers has the first down and plenty to spare, close to the 40-yard line of the Badgers. You know, talking about Smith, when we took a look at that replay on his last carry, he's now carried six times for 37 yards. So he has been very active on the ground. Rodgers has carried eight times for a total of 53. Well, that's the difference that Steve Smith provides the Michigan offense with. He becomes really a third running back. Now, Michigan has run the tailback, and they have run the fullback. And you can see the wind, and Michigan has that 20 to 25 mile an hour wind at their back. But with the way they're blocking up front, Ray, I don't think they need to throw the ball. They can just move it down the field on the ground. They have been very active with their running. Six various rushes for them. And close this time to the 35-yard line as Garrett was on the carry. And Harrington in there to make the hit. And, Ray, the pattern that's developing is interesting in that Michigan opens up the drive with a first down play going outside. Their second play on the drive is off tackle. Their third play is even back inside tighter, right over the center with the fullback. They're really mixing things up. Four yards on a carry, second and six. And a good fake that time by Smith. But going straight ahead, enough of the first down is Rice on the carry. And Raddatz back up in the linebacking core making the stop. So they have been very busy changing some of their linebackers in there. That's right, and Melka's back in the game now. But here it is again. Michigan gives the ball to the fullback. The linebackers are the key guys. You've got to block them. And there you see Fields right there going down after the block from Humphreys, but he's five yards off the ball. Linebackers have to make the hit two yards off the ball in order to be successful defensively. First and 10 for the Wolverines at the 29. 
of Wisconsin. Rogers just driving ahead and Harrington grabbing his jersey and trying to prevent any more yardage. But he picked up a good three, maybe four yards. Give him three. So it'll be second down and seven. We talked about the, the running of Michigan here in the first half. But Rice carrying three times with 22 yards. Garrett four times with 25 yards. And Armstrong one time, and that was the first play in the line of scrimmage, for four yards. So the fullbacks eight times have carried for a total of 51 yards. We've got second down and seven for Michigan at the 26 of Wisconsin. Kerry Smith in there. And going straight ahead is Rice across the 25 to the 24. A couple of yards. Third and five. Michigan going to the well again inside, Ray, between the two guards, Humphreys, Dixon, Belordis, and Diorio. Now you got a situation where a quarterback draw or possibly an option, they might call, going to the outside. Third and five of the Wolverines, Steve Smith. And gets it away. But incomplete. And Jennifer Carey Smith and Belford in there to break it up. And a good hit by Belford. Here's a look at it again. Smith gets the big rush. Does a good job to avoid it. But Belford has real good coverage on Carey Smith. The ball, because of the rush thrown out there a little bit too far, and Carey just couldn't hang on, although there was real good coverage. Now Slope, uh, Bergeron in there to try for his first field goal of the season. A 41-yard effort, high snap. And he has it, 41 yards, it's good by Bergeron. And Michigan's lead now increased to 16-7 to with 4.17 to go in the first half. of these motor oils would love to make this claim? Well, this one can. Mobile One, the official oil of the 84 Winter Olympics. Maybe you don't think you can give more to the torch drive this year. Times are tough. But perhaps you'd understand why we need your help if you saw things from a different point of view. Maybe you would listen to our needs if you couldn't hear. And you might see how much we need your help if you lost your sight. Because although times are tough for you, they could be a lot tougher. So please, won't you give generously? Well, if you want to talk about Bergeron, a young man that just kicked that field goal, you did not see any action last year from him, of course. But in 1981, did get in a ball game when Ali Hajashik was hurt. And that was against Northwestern. And he was one for two in that field goal department a couple of years ago and five for five for extra points. But this time, Slopey checks back in for the kickoff. And Marvin Neal is deep to receive for the Badgers, and he is a speedster and a good one. How many times you see that happening in a career? Embarrassing moments. Just about the time that Slopey was ready to kick it off. I don't know whether he got a piece of it or whether the wind blew it off. I think what happened was Slopey saw the ball on the tee and he saw that it was beginning to fall off, so he didn't go through with the kick. Now the referees are discussing what it is. Is it an offside penalty? There is no flag. A friend that used to do some broadcasting down in the south and his saying when they would open up with a kickoff was toe meets skin. And that same thing happened one day. The big build up for the opening kickoff and the guy went right by the ball and missed it. <laughs> you know what else? I've heard of double clutches in basketball but I haven't seen one on a kickoff. Well, I think Coach McLean of Wisconsin Dave wanted that ball down right there so the contact was made with the, with the football. But instead Slopey will try it again. Keep an eye on it. Well, he gets it away this time. And a line drive sailing out of the end zone. It'll go back to the 20-yard line of the Badgers.
Michigan's three points on that field goal, taking 334. And Michigan being able once again to move the ball on the Badger defense. And most of it on the ground, Ray. Uh, Wisconsin's done a good job against pass defense. Take a look at this kick. Now watch if the ball is leaning off the tee. Yeah, it's beginning to blow off the tee, I think, except it stayed up there, and Bergeron just <laughs> ran over the top of it. And he didn't make contact. Only one back in behind the quarterback, Randy White. And the pass is complete to McFadden. McFadden across the 25. Up close to the 27-yard line, Cochran in there to make the tackle. Second down and a long three. And we're seeing different coverage in a sense than last week where we saw Patterson and Danny Green for Washington catch those little flat passes and have room to run. This time, Michigan's secondary looks a little bit tighter on those receivers. I'm sure that's the week's worth of practice that they had. So Wright successful on his first completion, one for three now for seven yards. Harrison on the carry. Does not get the first down. Close to it. Maybe shy by a yard or half a yard. At the 29-yard line is where it'll be marked. Harrison has been busy. He said he wouldn't carry too much, but he has carried seven times in the first half for only a total of 13 yards. Uh, you wonder why they don't use Ellerson more. He is one great back, and they don't seem to give him the ball as much as I'm sure a lot of people think they should. And Ellerson back in there now in that eye formation. He is the tailback. And movement by Harrison, the fullback that time, jumped the count. And he was off and attempting to block, but the ball hadn't been snapped yet. So movement, motion in the backfield of the Badgers big play for Michigan defensively because they were coming with the blitz and I think Harrison from his fullback spot saw that knew he had to get to a place to block somebody and just anticipated it too quickly moved in the backfield big play for Michigan defensively because now they push Wisconsin back into a third and six Badgers collecting their fourth penalty for a total of 23 yards. And decline. Interesting. So instead of well, the force now into the punting situation, we can turn the box over and make it fourth and one. Okay. Apparently, what had happened was that they ran the play. The play was run, so they didn't get the first down. So they'll take the fourth down and get the ball back, Ray, with the wind at their back. Winslow back there to the punt. Uh, we're going to get a timeout now. Wisconsin calls for a timeout on fourth and one. Well, we've got a little time here with two minutes and 41 seconds. The story in the first half, Michigan on top. Billy Ray Perkins, for one brief moment, played left field in the majors. Looks like a stroll like night. Looks like a stroll like night. Looks like a stroll at night when things are going Stroll Light, a great tasting beer that doesn't fill you up. Looks like a great the left field when nothing can go wrong. Looks like a stroll at night when the sun come along. If there's anybody out there who's never tried pan pizza at Pizza Hut, boy, are you missing something. If you miss pan pizza at Pizza Hut, look at the cheese. Missing all that cheese. Don't it. Lots of tasty toppings up. Mm -hmm. Your first won't be the last for that. Ooh. So give it a try at your hometown pizza. During that Wisconsin timeout, revision and a strategy, instead of going with the punt on a fourth and one, the Badgers electing to go for that first down. Close to the 30-yard line. Ellerson, he is greeted there by Brooks, but he has enough for the first down. Brooks broke in there, made contact, but the momentum of Ellerson carried him 
across the 30 over the 31 yard line. So the Badgers keep the drive going, a brief drive here on a fourth and one. And Ellerson back out of the game, Ray, holding his left wrist. Watch it. They have good blocking at the point of attack, and Ellerson is a big guy at over 215 pounds. Runs right in there, head down, working hard. He gets met hard by Brooks, but the forward motion, leaning forward, is enough to get him the first. Wisconsin picking up its first first down, two and making a reception at the 38. But a flag has gone down to the line of scrimmage. A little preliminary discussion with the Wolverines. What do we have, an illegal man downfield? <laughs> I think it's either an illegal man. I should have brushed up on my official signals here. Even a football is slippery for the officials. That's it, Ray. Ineligible receiver downfield, and that is loss of down also. So another big penalty for Wisconsin, and coming into this game, Wisconsin was not a heavily penalized team. Averaging, I think, three a game. Well, really, a minority a number of yards. 26-yard line, second down of 15. The rush put on, and thank you, the interception. The ball was really thrown poorly in that Randy Wright was getting some pressure. He, he felt the pressure coming to the outside. He threw this ball well before the break was made, and he really had more time. And the receiver was nowhere near it, and Cooper just playing the outside zone ran in there and made the interception, tackled by Al Toon. Michigan back in business better that they get that play than stop them on fourth down. Third turnover by the Badgers, and the other two have led to Michigan points. On the interception, Cooper brings it back for a 20-yard interception at Michigan at the 11-yard line, first and 10. Rick Rogers, and Rogers down to around the seven. On that far side of the field, Harrington at the bottom of that pile. Got some help also from the defensive back moving up was Murrow. That was a straight power off tackle, Ray. Kind of like student body right. And that's exactly what they did. They're just powering Wisconsin off the ball. Nothing fancy here. Second and six. Kerry Smith in a tailback now for Michigan. Steve Smith, and going to the air, and a great catch as Nelson goes into the air and makes that fine reception. So Sim chalking up his first touchdown pass of 1983. The reason the play works is the play action. Here it is. Fake to the tailback into the line of scrimmage, holds the linebackers. Nelson fakes a block on the line of scrimmage and then releases. He's got the linebacker beaten by three yards, and that's the name of the play. Touchdown right there. Well, Nelson was so active last week at Washington with seven receptions and comes through today with three catches for a total of 29 yards and a TD. The, the Wolverines, Ray, are going to go for two points here and get that score back up to where they would be had Slopey not missed that extra point. And they have triple receivers right. First time we've seen that formation. Outside man as a tight end, Nelson. Carthens on the left side, another tight end. Smith wanted some running room and couldn't do it. Receivers all covered. And some good coverage that time by Harrington coming from behind to make the tackle. Well, Michigan's attempt to go for two points on the conversion does not work. And Michigan was hit with a blitz. Smith looking. This is the touchdown rather than the two-point conversion. Steve Smith makes a good throw to Nelson, who has beaten the linebacker because he paused that count or two inside to fake the block. 
and then he came free wide open into the end zone. Smith delivered the ball well up high. Sim Nelson gets the score. Michigan on top 22-7 after the two-point conversion fails. The Wolverines, after getting a turnover again, their second interception of the game, go 11 yards in two plays, don't use much time, but the important thing is they scored. Three turnovers by the Badgers, and those three turnovers have led to Michigan points. And this last one, the touchdown. You saw Schlope setting it up, Neil, to handle the kickoff, and so far there has not been a run back on the kickoff. Interesting, I thought on the media bus coming over today, Jim, talking about what you were talking about two weeks ago. Oh, how you'd like to see the ball marked back at the 35-yard line of the kickoff to see some runbacks. Yeah, because it is an exciting play, and you've got some great return people, and really you take it right out of their hands by guys like Schlopey kicking it down into the end zone. Jones handles it this time off his fingertips and out of the end zone, so it'll be brought back to the 20-yard line of the Badgers. One minute and 13 seconds to go in the first half, and the Wolverines on top by a score of 22-7. to seven. They spotted the... Badgers seven points right from the top when Ellerson went in on a nine yard carry and the extra point was good seven to nothing but since that time it's been all Wolverine and uh, I think more impressively is the fact that Michigan's defense has really buttoned up after that opening drive when Wisconsin ran the ball very well Ellerson picked up over 50 yards on the ground and uh, they've really toughened up since then Ellerson back in a tailback now for Wisconsin they use tune in motion First and ten, Ellison on the carry. Trying to get outside. And gang tackling led by Bourne, but Hassel doing a great job to really turn that run back in. You know, Tommy Hassel, for the second week in a row last week, was named Defensive Champion of the Week for the Wolverines in his performance against Washington. And he's really having a great year. He made the play there, even though he didn't get in on the tackle and he won't be credited for the tackle. He took on three blockers and would not get knocked down. He forced the play back inside. That's where the pursuit made the tackle. Well, after Ellerson ran for 42 yards on one carry, Badgers have picked up only 28 yards in their running attack. Second and eight. And off the fingertips of the big tight end, Jeff Nolt that time. Should have been caught. Nolts out of Escanaba, Michigan, and he was one of the real heavily recruited kids out of the state of Michigan. Michigan wanted him, but Jeff decided to come here to Wisconsin and has had a real good career. But I think what happened is Nolts just took his eye off the ball looking for Mike Bourne. He heard footsteps, as we say, and you've got to watch that ball into your hands and catch it. Every receiver learns that the first time they put on a uniform. Right one for five for seven yards of the passing department plus two interceptions third and eight for the Badgers and that one was almost intercepted Bourne that time he elected not to go for the interception played the man and no taking plenty of punishment well that's one of the things that Michigan talked about last week was that they were soft in their defensive secondary coverages Nault shaking up a little bit. I think he just probably had the wind knocked out of him. He's coming off the field. But the key is, when a receiver makes a catch, if the defensive back punishes him, makes him remember that catch, next time around, he's going to be thinking about the hit rather than the ball. Cooper back to handle a punt and almost blocked for the fair catch right at the 50-yard line. So down to 16 seconds remaining in the first half. 22 to 7, Michigan on top. And I guess you would say, as we talked to some of the coaches, there was just too much air in the defensive backfield by the Wolverines last week. Exactly. They were allowing too much cushion, too much air for the receivers, and they weren't coming up and making the hit on the catch. As soon as the guy caught the ball, he turned around. He had three yards to do something with. Now their receivers are playing a lot tighter, or the defensive secondary people are. Ray, I think they're going to go for one pass here and see if they can get a long field goal because they got the wind at their back. If they can get a 10, 12-yard pass, they might try to kick one from a long way. Bain and Johnson are the wide receivers to Nelson, complete at the 30-yard line. Nope, he didn't hang on to it. And that was the pass they needed. It gets them inside the 30. And I'll tell you, in pregame practice, we were watching both kickers from both squads with the wind were hitting them from 40 and 50 easily. They got another shot at one pass down inside that 30-yard line. And they might try the field goal because with that 20 to 25 mile an hour wind, that ball is 
rocketing right out of Camp Randall Stadium. It almost looks like the Metrodome up in uh, Minnesota, which they call the Homer Dome in baseball, and it's about the same way here because the ball is just rocketing right through those uprights. With the wind, you can kick it from 60 here. Little strategy meeting for Steve Smith. And Bo Schembechler, as Michigan called for a timeout with 11 seconds remaining in the half. That strategy, I think, is exactly what you're talking about, Jim, of getting that ball in a position to at least maybe get three before the half comes to an end. They need a 15 to 17 yard completion, and they had it if Sim Nelson could have held on to the last pass. 15 to 17 yards, I think you'll see a timeout, and I think you'll see Bergeron back on and try to kick one. Bean wide to the left, Giovanni Johnson wide to the right. Sim Nelson, the tight end, lined up on the right side, now splits out. And they put Rice into that wing back on the right side, so we see trips again. Smith with plenty of time. Giovanni Johnson attempting to make the reception broken up at the 20-yard line of the Badgers. Boy, they had three covering on that one. Giovanni is running a post pattern, and Wisconsin knows that Michigan's got to get into a certain area in order to kick. Now, there is the pass. It's a little bit too high. Giovanni was open in that seam between the linebackers and the deep people, but the pass overthrown a little bit. Giovanni not be able to get up and get it. Timeout again by Michigan with six seconds remaining. If that didn't work, let's try something else. And the story of what uh, Steve Smith needs to break a great record. There was a little controversy about this before the ball game of whether there was a typographical error on those records. Instead of needing four going in the ball game, or whether a one was left off and maybe needing 14. We'll have to get uh, Jim Schneider on that and uh, our statistician and get him to straighten that thing out. I mean, we got to have the good stats up here, Schneider. What do you say? <laughs> pressure, pressure, pressure. <laughs> and 10 for the Wolverines. Six seconds remaining in the first half. And over the middle, high and intercepted. And 10 for Nelson. And pulled off that time by Belford. Time will run out as Belford has run out of bounds at the Michigan 41-yard line. So that's the story in the first half as Michigan tried to add some more points and it was intercepted. And after two periods of play, Michigan 22, Wisconsin 7. Huge selections, unbeatable savings, important reasons why New York Carpet World is number one in no-wax vinyl flooring. Our vinyl installation contractors are equally or more important. Paul McClellan, George Litzow, Bill Conyer, all of them are experts, experienced craftsmen, the best in the industry. So here's an unbeatable combination. Just $6.77 a yard for Congolium's new Accent no-wax vinyl flooring with a five-year wear warranty combined with perfect installation by the experts from New York Carpet World. Introducing Grandma's Peanut Butter Chocolate Swirl Cookies. Bessie, your new peanut butter chocolate swirl is the cookie that confounds me. Oh? It's not hard and dry. It's moist and chewy. Oh. And you got real peanut butter flavor and rich, creamy chocolate filling? Yep. How'd you get so good so fast at baking cookies? It's all in the wrist. <laughs> new Grandma's brand Peanut Butter Chocolate Swirl Cookies taste suspiciously close to homemade. Come on and tackle a turkey, a Hardy's Turkey Club. Turkey Club. Turkey. Bacon and fixings on a natural grain bun. It's a great big portion of turkey breast. A whole lot of turkey to say the least. Less tomato and mayonnaise. And sizzly bacon as a centerpiece. Come on and tackle a turkey. Something exciting for lunch. Exciting for lunch. Come on, let's go gobble one up. A Hardy's Turkey Club. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Brandstatter, and every week during the fall, I have fun arguing with the head football coach at Michigan, Bo Schembechler. It's more a discussion than argument. The show is called Michigan Replay, and we'd like you to join us each week as we analyze every game and scout our next opponent. We also feature behind-the-scenes aspects of the Michigan program, and sometimes we even give Bo a chance to speak his mind on controversial subjects involving the college game. And, of course, that's always a barrel of laughs. And you thought I had an easy job. <laughs> Halftime at Camp Randall Stadium here on the campus of the University of Wisconsin. 
And for the University of Michigan, things were not occurring their way in the early stages of this ball game. No, on the very first possession by the Wisconsin Badgers, it looked like we might have a replay of 1981 where the Badgers upset Michigan, but they came back, and I think that shows the character Michigan had, the confidence they have in their running game. But I'll tell you, that first possession, when Ellerson ripped off a 42-yard gain, and then Ellerson went in from nine yards out for the touchdown, and Wisconsin had taken a seven-yard, a seven-to-nothing lead, and it was very simple. Ellerson got the ball in the backfield, and again, Wisconsin caved in the whole left side of the Michigan defense. Ellerson goes nine yards easy. They take a seven-nothing lead, and it looked at that point like the Wolverines might be in trouble because it was easy. And as you can say, I guess that's really been the, the only offensive threat by the Badgers in the first half. But Michigan fought back and tied up the ball game. Most impressive about Michigan, I think, is they did it on the ground into the wind. They had a chance early and threw an interception down there, and that hurt them. But the defense then came back up and made the big play. Then Rick Rogers got the ball after Wisconsin turned it over, and Rick Rogers went in to score to tie the game up at seven. That was a key because Michigan had met a blitz from them. Rogers saw it, he ducks it outside, and then turns it right upfield, levels off, and really powers into the end zone. That got Michigan going on the ground, and that was the key to the whole thing, with their domination later on on the ground. For the Badgers' offense, they have committed three turnovers. They've been costly ones. Michigan went ahead. It's 22 to 7, but the final six points came through the air. I yeah, didn't. Another thing was is that Randy Wright threw an ill-advised pass. Another turnover. Evan Cooper made the interception. He took it down inside the 10-yard line. Michigan tried to go on the ground against Wisconsin, but again, the Badgers are tough against anything on the ground with their active linebackers. So Michigan used that to their advantage. They faked the play action, ran Sim Nelson in as a blocker for one count, and then released him into the end zone. Steve Smith hit him right before the half. Michigan took the 22-7 lead. Their extra point, they went for two because Todd Slopey missed an extra point. So now they're only leading 22-7. But I think most impressive was the fact that they were able to move the ball so well on the ground. The second half kickoff just moments away. We'll have that for you after this timeout. Dear Republic Airlines, my name is John Langenfeld. Because of Republic Airlines, our family of seven got to go to San Diego. My dad does lots of traveling with your airline, so we use the tickets from your frequent flyer program to take our very first winter vacation. Thanks for your frequent flyer program, and thanks for taking good care of my dad. Every year, Republic gets thousands of letters that really say the same thing. Nobody serves our Republic like Republic. These are the cowboys of France. As they drive the wild horses of the Camargue region to pasture, they share the hard work. Later, they'll share some wine, the wonderful country wine of France. And now you can share it too, for Partage French country wine is here. Partage white tastes light and dry. Partage red is a soft red for the fresh bouquet. B&G's Partage. In France, it means to share. Let's compare this chicken, now holding the title, with the challenger, Church's Fried Chicken. Church's chicken is bigger, they use a bigger chicken and cut into fuel pieces. Yeah. Then Church's cooks those big, tender, juicy pieces, light, crispy, and golden, right before your eyes. Kentucky Fried doesn't. Church's gives you two big pieces for this low price. Kentucky Fried doesn't. <clears throat> Church's may be the challenger today, but I say we're looking at the new champ. At Church's, bigger is better. You know, I'm just like you. I like to save money, but I won't give up quality. So when it comes to these nationally known drug products, I go for these Genline comparable products. The active ingredients in both meet the same nationally recognized standards, and they work in the same way to bring you the relief you expect. Theirs don't offer you anymore. They just cost you more. If it begins with Gen, it ends with savings. second half of University of Michigan football is brought to you by Stroh Signature, the beer with something extra. And by America's largest carpet retailer, New York Carpet World, the better carpet people. And by Highland Appliance, everything you never expected from an appliance store. 
and Republic Airlines. Nobody serves our Republic like Republic. Todd Sloopy all set to kick off to Wisconsin as our second half just about ready to get underway. Jim, uh, what would you look from the Wolverines here in the second half? I think what we'll see is Michigan trying to keep the ball on the ground and control the game and control the football. There you see the deep man for Wisconsin to receive the second half kickoff. That's Marvin Neal in the middle of three deep receivers to receive Shlopey's kickoff. McFadden and Jones, the other two down there. And Neal will watch it sail out of the end zone as it has all afternoon. Again, with that strong 20 to 25 mile an hour wind at behind Michigan. So Wisconsin will be going into the win here in the third quarter, and they'll have that wind at its back in the fourth quarter. I think defensively you're going to see Michigan play a uh, similar defense uh, that they did in the first half. A little conservative. They probably won't blitz a lot, but they'll force Wisconsin to go the long way and play catch-up. So I don't think Wisconsin's a good offensive team as far as playing catch-up goes. You might see some blitzes and passing downs, but the Badgers cannot afford to turn it over like they did in the first half. 22 to 7, Michigan on top as we begin the second half. And Ellerson trying to go wide. Successful with that, gets across the 25-yard line. The knee finally goes down and around the 29-yard line. He's a tough, hard-nosed runner. Eight carries for 63 yards. Simple play, misdirection. Rodney Lyles gets caught inside, and Ellerson is able to break it around outside. Rich Hewlett overruns the ball. And look at this. Three or four Wolverines get shots at him, and Ellerson, so strong, bounces out the other side. Nine yards on the carry, second down, and one yard needed for the first down by the Badgers. Harrison, the pullback, running over his own man, trying to get that necessary one yard. Cinch it down there at the bottom. Also getting some help and getting back up the police, who's been very active in that first half and starting the second half defensive wise. Say shy of the first down by inches, third, and inches needed by the Badgers. Neal checking in into the wide receiver. And Toon checking out. They send Neal wide to the right. Double tight end employed by Wisconsin on a third and one. And a fumble. That ball goes across the 30-yard line and recovered by the Badgers. If it will be a first down, a Wendley on pile. And they get the first down. Allison was in there along with Lancey, the right guard, falling on that ball. Big play by Lancey to get on that ball. Had they not made that third and one, that would have been a terrible break, and it would have hurt the confidence, I think, of Dave McLean's crew. Wisconsin has fumbled four times this season, and all four times coming up with their own fumble. So they've had breaks in that department. They certainly have not had breaks in the turnover this afternoon in the way of interception. Hassel at the bottom of the pile, some help by Brooks and Boren. I'll tell you, you, you just don't run wide on Tommy Hassel's side. He is there. He feathered that play out again. He may not have gotten credit for the tackle in the official statistics, but he was the guy that feathered it out and turned it back up inside. May I call him Hassel the Hammer. <laughs> Second. And actually 10. Tone in motion for Wisconsin. And right out of the pocket. Boy, he put it up for grabs. Flags down as McFadden was knocked down. The Michigan backs defensive-wise converging that time on McFadden. They may get pass interference. Automatic first down at the 45-yard line of Wisconsin. But I think, Ray, important that Michigan defensively was up there making that play happen. And that's what the secondary has to do in situations like that. A lesson was learned expensively last week at Washington by not doing that. First and 10. Michigan on top, 22 to 7. Early stages now of the third quarter. Jones trying to make 
the reception and give Cochran credit that time of breaking up the play and trying to break up Jones. And evidence again, I think, Ray, of what we talked about the last couple minutes. Michigan secondary not giving the receiver as much air. That time Cochran came up. Jones had his hands on the ball. Would have been a tough catch, but it would have been an impossible catch because Cochran came up and really laid the lumber on him. And that's one of the things that defensive backs have to do. Michigan obviously learning their lesson last week. They're playing it a lot tougher here against Wisconsin. Right now, one for seven for only seven yards in the air. Trying with his eighth pass. Out to Ellerson, and he is trapped as Michigan defenders quickly closing up any possibility to break away a lot up there to greet him, but also get him some help from Mike Mallory. The 49-yard line of Michigan. It'll make it third down and five. So right now, 12 yards in the air, two for eight. And he came in this ball game 21 of 36. Michigan coming with a nickel and Tommy Hassel now inside, Gray. Well, we've been looking for Hassel. Intended for the tight end, Brett Pearson. Had him open, overshot him. They'll make it null. The tight end. Coverage by Rich Hewlett. Uh, Michigan with the five defensive backs coming with the nickel. Did a good job against it. Nault was held up on the line of scrimmage and really never able to complete his pattern and right through under pressure. Give DeFelice a little credit for rushing right that time on the pass. Winslow back to punt the story on him, the two previous ones. Cooper back around the 11, 12 yard line of Michigan. Single safety, fourth and five. Winslow's punt into that win. Cooper calls for the fair catch and he makes that at the 12 yard line. So we've got a timeout with 11.36 to go in the third quarter. Michigan 22, Wisconsin 7. The company said they had plans for me. Said I was crazy to throw it away to train horses. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. Glad I had my own plans. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. And here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh's signature is something extra. You have our name on that. A war is simmering on the Great Lakes. Somebody sooner or later is going to get popped uh, one, one way or another. A war between those who fish for sport and the Indians who fished for 12,000 years. They don't only keep the quotas that they're entitled to, they take whatever they get. With livelihoods at stake, the battle's heating up. We're sitting on a powder keg with a short fuse that's ready to explode. And it's going to affect you. Watch Michigan's Troubled Waters, a Channel 7 Action News close-up, starting Wednesday at 6. The Wolverines, for the first time in the second half, go on offense. Steve Smith, the quarterback, Garrett, the fullback, Kerry Smith, the tailback. First and 10 at the 12, that's Kerry Smith to the 15, 16, the 17 yard line. Stills in there to make the tackle. At the bottom of the pile for Wisconsin. And you saw Kerry Smith break that play back up over the middle. Again, Wisconsin defensively flows so quickly to the ball, they read so well, and they're so concerned of getting outside that when that play opens up, the tailback or the fullback breaks that back behind the pursuit and gets yardage. Six carries for Kerry Smith for 16 yards. And broken up that time. And tenant for Nelson. Your man Melka, Jim, in there to do the job that time. Pass was there, I think. It's the second one, Sim Nelson has dropped. Uh, Steve delivered it well, low. The only place it could have been caught was by Sim Nelson, and he had the first down yardage. He just dropped the ball. I think Michigan, if they're going to throw here, ought to look at the possibility of going to one of those backs out of the backfield because they have come open on a couple of occasions. Dave Johnson split wide to the right, being wide to the left. Up the middle this time is Terry Smith. A lot of daylight, a lot of green. Across the 35, up to around the 38-yard line. A smart call by the Wolverines, and give Smith credit for 22 yards on that carry. A very smart call by Michigan. I'm sure Wisconsin thinking the same thing 
that Michigan goes second down and five and goes to the air. Here they run the draw play, and it's blocked well. Kerry Smith had the hole at the line of scrimmage. That was what made it work. And you see 64, Jerry DiOrio blocking Melka. The key to the offense, we said before the game, blocked the linebackers, and DiOrio got the block that made that play work. Garrett the fullback, Kerry Smith the tailback on a first and 10. Here's the option by Steve Smith, cuts it up at the right time and has enough for the first down. Right at the 50-yard line, might have got a few inches into Badger territory. Melko is the man that brought him down. He is active, but I don't mind, I don't think Michigan minds Melka making tackles after the ball carrier gets 10 yards. Melka stopping Smith that time, and Steve now with seven carries for a total of 49 yards. First and 10 at the 50-yard line. Bean wide to the left. Steve Johnson wide to the right. They put Nelson the tight end on the right side. Kerry Smith again right up the middle. The hole opened up and tripped up a little bit in there by Burgle, the tackle. One thing that we didn't talk about, Jim, earlier was the Wisconsin linemen, how they line up in the relation to the ball, will give you a little yardage on first and second downs. Yeah, they, they considered a successful defensive play if you get two yards. But Michigan's been ripping them off at five-yard clips, and part of the reason is because of that cutting back technique by the running backs. They're cutting back behind the flow. Second and five. Fullback going ahead that time did not get the first down. Well, Smith, Steve Smith, needing three yards to pass Bob Greasy of Purdue, his old mark. Tenth of the all-time total offense in the Big Ten. He's in pretty select company. Boy, and how. And the only guy to just keep trailing a former Michigan guy by the name of Rick Leach. That's right. Third and two for the Wolverines. <laughs> Terry Smith trying to bull to the 40. Got close to it and then shoved back. Narrow in there along with Johnson. At the bottom, Melka was also there for Wisconsin. Like I said, his forward motion was just shy of the 40-yard line. Mark it at the 39. And one of the keys there was Wisconsin came in the middle of the field with a goal line defense. And that's what stopped Kerry Smith. Michigan's going to go for it here on fourth down. And the problem with goal line defenses in the middle of the field sometimes, Ray, is that if you crack it, you can go the distance. Armstrong now in a fullback. On the option, Kerry Smith has the first down and taken out of bounds at the 32. So everything plugged up the middle that time and then the pitch out working. Well, real good short yardage play, the option, because you know the defense is loaded up inside to stop the fullback. You fake to the fullback, come down the line of scrimmage, they had Steve Smith stopped, but they didn't have the pitch back covered. And when the pitch went out there, Kerry Smith had the first down easy. Good short yardage call, good execution by Michigan offensively. Michigan picking up its third first down on this drive. And now Smith going to the air. Firing in and out of the hands. Bean had beaten his man over there, and that was Merrill. He couldn't hang on to it. The ball hit Vincent right in the chest, and I think he should have caught the ball. The problem, Ray, is, is look at the shadows on the field. The ball is thrown right up into the sun, and I think Vincent might have lost it in the sun because he is open. The ball hits him on the chest, and I think he lost it right there at the last second. But the thing that that play does, it lets Wisconsin know that the wideouts for Michigan are in this game. Well, the wideouts right now, Gilvana Johnson and Steve Johnson on a second and 10. the backfield Kerry Smith makes the reception at the 25 and drives to the 21 yard line Wisconsin that time did a good job of defensing on the wide outs the that, inside wide receiver that's right that's why the play previous to that was it's not an actual decoy because you know Vincent Bean was open but they're concerned now so they're taking a little deeper drops because those wide outs are getting open behind their cornerbacks so Michigan comes back underneath to Kerry Smith you see all linebackers are back there about 10, 12 yards. Smith came open seven yards away from the ball, gets the first down. 
at the 21-yard line. Dave Smith wants the air again. Almost intercepted. Johnson over there to cover for Wisconsin and covering on Gilvani Johnson. Real good coverage. On this play, I think Steve probably should have run the ball. He had lots of room out there, and the wide out was covered. Steve Johnson out there was covered well by Richard Johnson, and uh, that pass really had no chance of getting in there. On that previous reception, on the pass from Smith, that was complete. That gives Smith now a total of 4,836 yards in total offense. That now makes him 10th in the all-time list in the Big Ten. Thrown behind Nelson that time. And covering on the play was Belford of Wisconsin. Interesting, Ray, in that Michigan, after the long pass to Vincent Bean down the sideline, has thrown on every down. They've been so successful running the football, knocking Wisconsin off the ball. It's kind of a surprise that Bo has gone to the pass as much as he has especially down close inside Wisconsin's 30-yard line. On a situation like this, if he wants to stay with a pass, it might be good to try a screen, some kind of a misdirection, some kind of a, maybe a quarterback draw, maybe a draw play. That's Armstrong in motion, the pitch to Kerry Smith at the 20-yard line, and Melko over there to meet him. Trying to turn it back in. He got away from the safety, and that was Ken Stills breaking in on a little bit of a blitz trying to come in there. Got away from him, but Melka on the far side of the field came up and stopped him just inside the 20. Uh, uh, interesting uh, interesting in the play selection, don't you think, Ray? In the fact, they move the ball on the ground down inside the 30, and then they turn around and Michigan throws three or four in a row and fail to get the first down. Bergeron in there to try for a 27-yard field goal, make a 37-yard field goal. He has the distance, and he's good. So with 6.53 to go in the third quarter, Michigan 25, Wisconsin 7. Burger King presents the McDonald's. An unusual interview. Is it true all of you switched to Burger King? Yes! Yeah. How come? Bacon double cheeseburger. Flame broiling. The Whopper. French fries. Being McDonald's, you must take a lot of ribbing. Yes, we can't show our faces anywhere anymore. Would you advise everyone to switch to Burger King no matter what their name is? You bet. You bet. Okay, America. Now, when you switch to Burger King, you can tell them... McDonald's, thank you. On our next Good Afternoon Detroit, feet should be fashionable, too. But what do the designers have in store for them? We'll show you one designer's fall festival of footwear. It seems like we're all under pressure to own designer clothes from infants on up. Sylvia Glover finds a shop that specializes in those kinds of fashions and in saving you money. Summer may be over, but the memories will linger on for some kids, especially those who honed their skills at a summer camp for computer buffs. That's Good Afternoon Detroit, weekdays at 4 on 7. Well, walk-on senior Bob Bergeron has an afternoon to remember. He's two for two in the field goal department, and he may have won that job. Now Slopey will handle the kickoff duties. Bergeron's done a great job, and the two opportunities he's gotten for field goals, he split the upright, so I'm sure Bo will probably go with him. 41 and 37 yards on those field goals. Slopey's drive off the fingertips of Neal, back into the end zone, touch back, and the Badgers will bring it back out again to their 20-yard line. Michigan, on that field goal, worked 14 plays that covered 88 yards and took off the clock four minutes and 43 seconds. So we've got a 25 to seven ball game. The Wolverines on top, and they have dominated after the first three minutes of this ball game. Both offensively and defensively. Uh, we've seen Gary Ellerson, Wisconsin's fine running back, gain some yardage, but Wisconsin really hasn't gotten on track and across Michigan's 50 offensively other than that first drive. Well, the Badgers will try their luck on offense once again. No place to go that time for Larry Emery at tailback. Mike Bourne was spelling that play all the way. Defensively, Michigan now gambling a little bit, knowing Wisconsin's got to do something to get the ball upfield. That time they ran a counter option play where they come back away from the flow. Michigan gambled a little bit on first down with a blitz, and Bourne broke through and made the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. 
Strong safety Rich Hewlett back into the lineup now for Michigan. Hassel checks out. Second and 14. Wright trying to find somebody. And that one is intended for his fullback, Harrison. Boy, with a soft pass coming out of there, a little bit high, you can see Harrison going to the air. I'm going to go back to Emory, who carried on that previous play. He's carried only twice in the place of Ellerson today, and not much to show for it, a minus seven. Yeah, and I don't think that the pass by Wright was the problem there. I think that it was the pattern by Harrison. He's got to get upfield a little bit more out of that offensive defensive line blocking he's got to get upfield I don't think he came upfield far enough splitting the backs now with Harrison and Emery on a third and 14 to Emery and complete gets across the 20 yard line to around the 23 and I'll tell you there's some physical punishment going on down there right now even after the whistle sound and Michigan has an injury on the field Al Sinsich middle guard is hurt on about the 20 yard line and the trainer Russ Miller and his crew are coming out to take a look at him. So we've got a timeout with 5.52 to go in the third quarter. Michigan leading by a score of 25 to 7. This bartender's next big league pitcher and loves to serve fire brewed strobes. See what I mean? That was his fastball. That was the curve. <laughs> Wild pitch. What was that? Relief pitcher. From one beer lover to another's toast. <laughs> Quick breakfast doesn't have to mean plastic plates and skimpy portions. That's it? And you don't have to settle for... The yay with you all. Now you can have all the breakfast you want at the new breakfast and fruit bar at Elias Big Boy. What could be faster or better than helping yourself to fresh scrambled eggs, smoked bacon and sausage links, crisp home-style potatoes, country fresh biscuits, fresh fruit, and so much more, all for one low price. Enjoy the fresh magic of Elias' new breakfast and fruit bar. Everybody's doing it at Elias Big Boy. Sensic was helped off the field. Fourth down and eight now for the Badgers. Winslow back to punt. And back for Michigan, Giovanni Johnson at his 40-yard line. So Winslow with about a 38-and-a-half-yard average. End of the win. And not a very good one. The fair catch signal for at the 45-yard line. And so the Wolverines with 5.34 to go in the third quarter with great field position. They've only scored once in the third quarter on the field goal by Bergeron. I think with the wind, Michigan would like to get on the board with a touchdown and, and lengthen that lead a little bit because in the fourth quarter, Wisconsin will have the wind, and you can see it's still blowing strong here in Camp Randall and probably will put the ball up a lot. Only a 33-yard punt, Michigan. Just inside its own 46. Mercer on his first carry. Gets across the midfield stripe, and a flag goes down. A call might be on a late hit from Harrington. Personal foul against Wisconsin, and it was on the late hit. Mercer was going down, and uh, the defensive back knew it. He was standing right in front of him. It was in the open field, and it was right in front of the official. And if you're going to hit on a late hit on somebody, you don't do it right in front of the official. That's a sure way to get 15. Five uh, penalties against Wisconsin for a total of 45, and they mark this one down to the Badgers' 31-yard line. Steve Johnson checking in for Michigan. Gilvani Johnson checking out. First and 10 for the Wolverines. 25 to 7, Wolverines on top. Mercer again, a lot of daylight. And close to a first down. Hey, right side of that line doing some good blocking with Humphreys and Doug James over there. Here it is. 
Here it is, Ray. And, and again, watch the watch it break back. See Rogers take that step back. The whole right side is caved in, but they're flowing so hard. And it actually has graft that comes back from his outside spot to make the hit on Brian Mercer. But the hole is opening up back inside. They're cutting it behind that pursuit. And that's one of the ways, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, that you can hurt a defensive team that flows that hard to the football. Neil level shot there. Get an idea of what you're looking at and whether it might be coming your way or not. On a second down and a short one. Mercer back now at the tailback position. Rice the fullback. And Mercer on his third carry. Flag goes down, got the first down, and inside the 10. Flag went down around Humphreys and Komet. They were working on each other down there. Holding call against Michigan. The whole right side of the offensive line, I'll tell you, is blowing people off the ball. And the flag is on Stefan Humphreys for holding. And, you know, you have to look at it in the films to make sure, but the hole is so huge. And that's the second straight play. Michigan has run the same exact play with Mercer carrying. And they're just blowing the left side of the Wisconsin defensive front off the ball. Scott Burgold and nose guard Lance Branneman are just getting moved out of there. Well, they push it back now, back to the Michigan 31-yard line. Second down and 10. Mercer, a little stutter step and a little pause there. They got a couple of yards out of that unusual action. After he got through the line, Melka makes the tackle. Looked like a straight draw play, and Brian Mercer did a good job at the line of scrimmage. See the lineman set up like it's pass block. There's the handoff. Now here's Mercer's great ability as an athlete to cut back to where there is daylight. 25 yards now for Mercer and three carries. Third and two. And the option. Mercer trying to get the first down. I sent Rice through the line on a pitch out to Mercer, trying the right side. And he will be shy of the first down. Steve should have cut that option play back up inside because Wisconsin had two people outside, one to cover the quarterback and one to cover the pitch back. That's why Mercer didn't get the first down because there was a guy out there to take him. If Steve cut it back inside, he'd probably gotten five yards in the first down. Quarterback decision on whether to pitch or keep is the key to the success of option football. Michigan on a fourth down and one. Armstrong in motion. Mercer tries the right side, should have the first down as it gets to the 20 yard line. Draft the tackler for Wisconsin. Once again, Ray. Michigan going to that right offensive side of the line of scrimmage behind Humphreys and uh, Doug James, Clay Miller. You can see the good hard running by uh, Mercer when he gets hit. He rolls and falls forward for the first down. At the 20-yard line of Wisconsin. And a pitch out to Mercer, right side. Had one man to beat. Slowed up a little bit by Fields and then run out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Well, now there you see the play where the option does work. Steve Smith that time made the right decision in pitching. Here he comes. The, the play action holds the linebackers. There's the man he must pitch on. Now there's nobody out there to cover Rodgers, whereas before there was. Good blocking by the wideout on that side, Steve Johnson, to get Mercer a couple extra yardage. Good point. He was still trying to go for further yardage and finally shoved out of bounds, elbowed out of bounds. So Mercer, six carries for 36 yards. Kerry Smith now back in a tailback. And Kerry very close to getting the first down, getting across that 10-yard line, and has the first down. And Ray, a change in strategy in that the last time Michigan had the ball inside the 30 on their previous drive, they went to the air. Here, they have stayed on the ground and they have been successful moving the ball at five yards a crack on the ground. 
That's uh, seemingly the success here today is that Wisconsin can be run on uh, with cutback plays from the backs, and they're just powering them off the ball with the offensive line. First and goal for the Wolverines at the eight-yard line of the Badgers. And Kerry Smith has picked up now a total of 58 yards. Going again. And good driving legs that time takes him to the five-yard line. Actually, the last couple of yards off balance. And this whole series, the entire series, has been into the right side or short side of the field. Obviously, Michigan have seen something, and Wisconsin hasn't adjusted to it that well because everything has gone to the right side, the short side of the field. Possibly, Wisconsin defensively is overshifting to the wide side. Pretty well balanced rushing attack by the Wolverines. Smith with 61 yards, 58, 59 by Rodgers. Touchdown, Michigan. Moving straight ahead that time, Dan Rice going in for the score. And that was the first part of the option play, right? Where they give the ball to the fullback, and Smith and Kerry Smith go down the line of scrimmage looking like the option. Smith reads the tackle. He sees him breaking outside. He gives the ball to the fullback, and there is the hole. Real good block in there by Stefan Humphreys to get Rice into the end zone. Well, Rice does the job crossing a goal line. Michigan's lead increased to 31 to 7. As the Wolverines went 54 yards in nine plays. Bergeron to try for the extra point. And he is on mark with that one. So Bergeron putting the points up the board with his toe this afternoon. And acting a little bit more consistent. 32 to 7. Michigan on top with 1-11 to play in the third quarter. Michigan has done it on the ground, too, and this huge crowd of over 70,000, possibly 75,000 here at Camp Randall Stadium has watched Michigan dominate on the ground. Look at 76, Stefan Humphreys blocking Burgold, 92. He held him right out of the play, and that was the block that enabled Rice to get into the end zone, and the linebackers were blocked out of there also. Real good play by the Michigan offense to get down in there and really punch it on the ground and dominate with their offensive line. Well, Badger fans, some 75,000, have to be a little bit disappointed this afternoon after their team in non-conference play. Jumped off with two wins and no losses. They were talking about this being the best start since 1978 when the Badgers went 4-0. and And in severe trouble now with 1-11 to go in the third quarter and Michigan on top, 32-7. to On that last scoring drive, Michigan utilizing the clock and I thought moving with, with ease that time on the ground. Yeah, and it makes you wonder why Bo the previous time went to the air there. Uh, he's so successful on the ground. This time, he does it on the ground and gets six instead of settling for the three points. Neal taking it at the goal line on the kickoff by Slopey. Driving it outside and then driven out of bounds. Tony Gant in there to help it. 22-yard return and Gant making a hit toward the sideline. They have a little bit of a lane opened up outside. It's the first kick we've seen returned, and it's kind of a surprise because Schlopey usually kicks him deep in the end zone. But here's the cut by Neal that gets him outside, and then they just feather him out close enough to the sideline and use that sideline as an extra defender, and they just force him out of bounds. They spot the ball at the 24-yard line, first and 10 for the Badgers. They split their backs once again. They use the eye, and they'll split the backs. Complete at the 28 to Emery coming out of the backfield. Carlton Rose in there, and along with Mike Boren to make the stop. Michigan with a new middle guard, too, in there. Al Sinchich has not returned to the game. Joe Gray in there at middle guard, Ray. And again, I think we see the evidence of Michigan's secondary pass coverage coming up and really laying the lumber to receivers. We heard that hit in our headsets as both Rose and Boren got in there and made the receiver know that if you're going to catch the ball, you're going to be punished. Second and five for the Badgers at their own 29-yard line. Harrison trying to get the first down, does not do it, gets close to the 30, maybe the 31-yard line. The young man that you were talking about a little earlier, DeFelice in there to make the tackle. Mallory moving in. Mike Bourne also helping out, and here's the key. 
play is stopped in the middle, but Boren stays home. There is the hit by Mike Boren, and here comes the police over to help with Mallory. But both linebackers playing better against that draw play. Well, there it is. The end of the third quarter. And Michigan leading by a score of 32 to 7. The fourth quarter coming up after this timeout. Well, Gerald, it's almost time for Highland Super Sale. Let's see. The Johnsons are here. The Willens. Wait a second. Where are the Krupples? Announcing Highland Super Sale. A sale where every price on every item is marked down so low, some people won't let anything stand in their way to get there. And understand it, the Krepples missing this sale. Right? Gee, I wonder if they forgot. Right now, this RCA 19-inch cover TV is just $269, save $110. And this 315-pound capacity Space Saver Freezer, just $277, save $72. So, no matter how you get there, get there. Gerald, we can't wait any longer. Mr. Kreppel. But where's Mrs. Kreppel? Highland Super Sale. Now through Tuesday. Honey, the microwaves are over here, see? A war is simmering on the Great Lakes. Somebody sooner or later is going to get popped uh, one, one way or another. A war between those who fished for sports and the Indians who fished for 12,000 years. They don't only keep the quotas that they're entitled to, they take whatever they get. With livelihoods at stake, the battle's heating up. We're sitting on a powder keg with a short fuse that's ready to explode. And it's going to affect you. Watch Michigan's Troubled Waters, a Channel 7 Action News close-up, starting Wednesday at 6. Will you give more to the torch drive? Oh, I'd like to give more to the torch drive, but the cost of living's killing me. Give more? We can hardly afford his college. Look, I'm just getting back in my feet after the recession. Well, it's been a bad year. The tax hike, the mortgage, now both kids need braces. If you give excuses, what will we give? Now more than ever, the torch drive needs your support. So please give generously. down and four for the Badgers as we start the fourth quarter. That ball at the 30-yard line of Wisconsin. A final 15 minutes to go in this ball game. Michigan on top, 32 to 7. Wright, flag is down, and Wright's out to Harrison. Should have enough for the first down, but a flag back at the 31-yard line. Well, through that third quarter, unofficially, we're talking about domination in this game we've got Michigan for 63 plays and Wisconsin for 33 and that'll talk a little bit about ball control and domination in this game well, I think if there's an offensive champion of the week this week you might give it to the entire right side of the offensive line or for that matter the whole offensive line because as we have talked I would like to see running plays what they are averaging per running play because I think it's going to be around the five six yard range they have just blown Wisconsin off the ball offensively up front. And one of the keys to that is that it keeps your defense off the field and keeps them fresh for, you know, a really frenzied attack by the opposition being down as far as they are. That was offsides by Michigan. Penalty was declined, and they got the first down. At first at 10, and that time Wright trying to get the ball away, and heavy pressure that time. Ball is incomplete seen a little bit better pass rush from Michigan too. That time it was Kevin Brooks who forced Wright to throw that a little bit early. He might even have got a hand on the ball, but the pass rush is the best defense you can have against the pass. You force that quarterback out of the pocket, you force him to throw under pressure, and he makes mistakes. Now the senior Nate Rogers has checked in at the nose guard position for Michigan. So they've had Sunchips, and he went out with an injury, then Gray, and now Nate Rogers, youngster out of Warren, Ohio. Overthrown. And Randy Wright really looks like he's very unsure of himself when he's in the passing situations in this ball game. Yeah, it, it almost looks like he's, he's tentative in a way. That pass he threw up as a floater. He really did it. Didn't have any chance to get the receiver, Michael Jones. And uh, I think probably one of the reasons is he may be a little gun shy from the turnovers and the interceptions he threw the first half. Story through three quarters on the ground. You can see Michigan dominating in that department. 
as they have in just about every department of this ball game. Right to try it again. A lot of pressure, avoids that pressure, and had a man open, and that was Toon in and out of his arms. He had beaten John Lott. Should have made the reception. It didn't hang on to it. Incomplete. Yeah, I think John Lott came in and did get a hand in there just as the ball arrived and probably broke Toon's concentration. Big rush once again coming, and that's on the outside, but Wright evades it. Now, here's the throw, and I think that Lott comes from behind and gets a hand in there. And just deflects it, although Toon should have probably caught it and hit him in the hand. Winslow back to punt for Wisconsin fourth and ten. Giovanni Johnson standing back at the Michigan 25-yard line. Backs up now and takes it at the 22. Got a good block, gets outside, and then is crushed at the 30-yard line and coming up there to make the hit for Wisconsin, Fred Armstrong. So we've got a timeout right now with 4.15 to go. Michigan on top, 32-7. to seven. You know New York Carpet World is America's largest carpet retailer, but you should also know we're the leader in no-wax vinyls. We're number one because of our fast delivery, our lower prices, and our famous brands like Congolium. Our selection's biggest, and nobody beats our prices. For example, Congolium's sensational new Accent, no-wax vinyl flooring. It's $8.50 almost everywhere, but our everyday price is just $6.77 a yard. So for your kitchen, bath, or any room, the only place to shop is New York Carpet World. Jay Barry, seven work. in your life. The Boy Scouts were a big part of my life as a kid, and scouting is even bigger today. There are active inner-city troops, programs for the handicapped and the single-parent boys, and women are now becoming scout leaders. The motto is, be prepared, and scouting does that. Prepare as a boy for life in the 80s. So give them a call and find out how you can become a part of the Boy Scouts. It's a big part of being a boy. Let's eat. How about it? Huh? All right. I was stand corrected. I think I said 4.15 to go. Hang on. We got a little more time than that. 14.15 to go. And Wisconsin recovers Michigan's turnover at the 26-yard line. Ray David Hall into the game as quarterback for Michigan, replacing Steve Smith. Quarter center back, quarterback center exchange. He never got the ball. And here's the problem. He should have fallen on it instead of trying to pick it up. If he falls on it, Michigan still has possession. But he didn't. Wisconsin now gets a break. 14-12 left to go, Ray. And I don't like to talk about comebacks because we got hurt by one last week. But you don't give a team a chance to get back into a game. I don't think Wisconsin's got enough time to make up 32-7, but you don't like to give them the opportunity. You're thinking about it, aren't you? Yeah. Scott Burgle, a man that recovered that ball for Wisconsin. So at the 26-yard line of Michigan, first and 10. Out by himself is Harrison and makes the reception. The fullback slipping out of the backfield. Made the reception run around the 21-yard line and got close to the 18-yard line of the Wolverines. Kevin Brooks in there to make the tackle. Real good play by Randy right here because he's looking at the face of a blitz. Here comes Hewlett, and on the other side, it looked like Hassel, and he threw that ball over some heavy pressure. Harrison makes a good catch and then gets in there for yardage, but the key to the play was the fact that Wisconsin caught Michigan in the blitz. Right now, 6 for 17 for a total of 37 yards. That's Neal, the wing back on the left side. They got McFadden split wide to the left out of your screen. And on the carry with daylight, Larry Emery inside the five-yard line to the four of Michigan. And again, Michigan came with a blitz from the outside by Rich Hewlett, who's the safety man. You'll see him up in the line of scrimmage, number two, running right through there. What they do is they crack a crease in the line of scrimmage, and there are no people in the secondary because the linebackers are blitzing too. So Emery gets real good yardage into the secondary and when you got defensive backs 10 yards behind the ball making tackles you know the other team's doing pretty well emory stays in there at tailback is carried three times for a total of seven yards first and goal and outside can't find the handle that's tune tune had just checked back into the ball game that covering him on the play was john lott moving up quickly and they'll mark it at here's, the two-yard line. Here's what they call their option. You see Wright is getting penetration from Lyles, and here's Toon on the end. Now, drops the ball, gets a break, and then it bounces right back up to him. Lott has to come over and make a 
real good tackle because he could have turned that corner and got in had Lott not knocked the feet out from under him. Second and goal for the Badgers at the two-yard line of Michigan. Harrison and Emery, the running backs of that high formation. And by himself as Harrison, just delay movement coming out of the backfield. And the pass from right, a two-yard pass for the touchdown. Well, they ran a pattern that forced Michigan to cover the fullback who is playing on the wing with a linebacker. And I think what we had was a mistake in coverage and that nobody went with a fullback at all. They ran a wide receiver out to take the cornerback with him. He went out there and then the fullback delayed a second and just came wide open in the flat. There was nobody there to cover and I think we had a mistake in coverage. Kevin Rohde, a try for the extra point. Kicked one in the early moments of this football game when Wisconsin went out of front 7-0. And his kick is up and good. So Wisconsin now trailing Michigan by a score of 32 to 14. As the Badgers move 26 yards in four plays after the turnover by the Wolverines. We'll be right back. Billy Ray Perkins, for one brief moment, played left field in the majors. Looks like a stroll like night. Looks like a stroll like night. Looks like a stroll like night. When things are going Stroh Light, right. a great tasting beer that doesn't fill you up. Looks like great the on the left field. Side. When nothing can go wrong. Looks like a stroll like night. When we can come along. When I knew we had a game one, I used to write up a Dutch Master or El Producto cigar. But then they mostly stopped using a natural leaf wrapper. Now I smoke King Edward Deluxe in the white pack. They still have a real imported tobacco leaf wrapper, so they smoke great. And they're only 15 cents, and that makes King Edward cigars a winner. And I like a winner. Try King Edward Deluxe, a real imported tobacco wrapper, only 15 cents. The 12 17 to go. Michigan on top by a score of 32 to 14. The Wolverines in the fourth quarter here have run just one play from the line of scrimmage, while the Badgers have run a total of eight. Lanham to kick off now for the Badgers. Giovanni Johnson and Steve Johnson waiting for the kickoff. Giovanni at his two yard line. They'll get to around the 17 yard line. Things getting a little bit heavy down there. And just filling up the spots. The flag is down around the 26-yard line. We'll wait for the call on that one. Fifteen yards on the run back. And holding on Michigan. So they'll march this one off. John Mellon. And his staff, umpire today, Dan Davey, Bob Walker, the head linesman, Ron Winter, the line judge, Larry Niemer is the field judge, side judge is Tom Zemanski, back judge top five. Against Michigan, well, next week, of course, the Wolverines return home. And we'll be facing Indiana University. We hope that you'll be out for that one. Steve, Steve Smith. Check in, in unison. Steve Smith into the game, back for David Hall. David made that costly fumble. Smith now back in the game. Hands off to Kerry Smith. Fights between guard and tackle. That gets up around the 13-yard line. Really got to be impressed with the way Bull has used his backs today, the tailbacks and the fullbacks. With Rogers, Kerry Smith, Brian Mercer all in there. Kerry, by the way, has carried 14 times for a total of 66 yards. And that fullback department with Rice and Armstrong and Garrett, they've all been in there. And don't forget, Steve Smith has been a decent runner for Michigan, and he's really helped them. Very true. Second and five. Kerry Smith on the carry. Almost got away that time. Burgle was in there to reach out and make a hit on him. Tim Jordan. And once again, Michigan running to the right side of their offensive line into the short side of the field. Having good success with it. Third down and one. Big play here for Michigan. 
on the board with the 11.07 to go. Double tight end Nelson and Carthens in there. Carthens on the right side. Needing a yard. And Steve Smith trying to slip outside and burrow hole is there to greet him. They faked to the fullback and then rolled out. And the junior from Wattatusa, Wisconsin, making a stop. Coming down the line on the option, and Steve turns it up inside, but there are too many people out there. They don't have it blocked to cut off that pursuit. Burgold, the tackle, is the guy that you've got to seal off down inside in order for the option to work. Clay Miller didn't seal him, and the option didn't work, and Michigan forced to punt. So Bracken, Don Bracken, checks in for the punt. McFadden deep for Wisconsin around his 45-yard line. Short punt, but a towering one, and McFadden with a fair catch at the midfield strike. Well, we got a timeout with 10 minutes and 8 seconds to go in this ball game. Michigan on top by a score of 32 to 14 after that 33-yard punt. I left a big company to turn my hobby into my living. When a man has something extra deep inside his soul, it shines like a diamond and it's worth more than gold. I never was a company man. So here's to the man who looks deep inside. And here's to the man who finds something extra. Stroh's signature is something extra. You have our name on that. Catch Kelly and Company all this week. Now Monday, John and Marilyn get pointers from the Slob Sisters on cleaning up their acts. Tuesday, we'll learn little-known facts about America's most famous family, the Kennedys. And on Wednesday, John Forsyth reveals Blake Carrington's game plan this year on Dynasty. Thursday, Oral Roberts' former daughter-in-law reports some shocking stories about one of the country's most trusted men. And Friday, fitness expert Bonnie Pruden cures any ache or pain. Join Marilyn and John live on Kelly and Company weekdays, 9 a.m. and Jim Brandstetter. Very happy you could join us along our Wolverine Sports Television Network this afternoon. With 10 minutes and 8 seconds to go, the Badgers at the midfield stripe. First and 10. Michigan on top, 32-14. Right with a lot of time. Fly pattern and Jennifer Jones broken up by Gant at the 5-yard line. Ball underthrown and Michigan had a real good opportunity for an interception. Cochran and Gant both back there. Randy Wright didn't throw that ball far enough. And one of the keys to throwing long passes is you never throw the long ball short. You've got to throw it up there and let the receiver run under it. Wiles rushing on that play by the Wolverines. Sort of hurried right a little bit, but not impressive, especially with the wind at his back. Of that passing off. Ten minutes and one second to go. Second and ten. And the little draw play will... Maybe get a yard, two at the most. Almond Trout with his first carry. A freshman out of Elgin, Illinois. And I would think that the Badgers would have to get more out of their ground game than they're getting in this ball game for the season I'm talking about, looking down the road. Well, again, you wonder why they don't use Ellerson a little more. I mean, Larry Emery's in there now at tailback, and Gary Ellerson was so successful in the first half. Right, looking for somebody. And a good, good catch that time. Turned in by the backup tight end, Brett Pearson. Does a real good job. Michigan, again, has real good coverage on this pass, but Pearson went up and made a great catch. This is the kind of thing, sometimes you don't mind seeing it. If the guy makes the great catch, uh, under heavy coverage, you know, there's nothing you can do about this. But there's good coverage. The ball is laid out there, and he has to go off his feet to make the catch. Hewlett's got decent coverage. It's just that Pearson made the good catch, and Wright threw it up there fairly decently. Made a yard, Wisconsin, for the first down. And jumping and making contact with Nate Rogers, the nose guard of Michigan. But they're going to call it? Yes, they do, against Michigan. But maybe there's been a little movement by Wisconsin. Not so. So that mistake means it's first down for the Badgers. Yeah, and this is the kind of thing I think that is most distressing to 
the coaches, Bo Schembechler and Gary Muller and those people, is that you've got a big lead, but you can't lose concentration. And when you jump the snap count like that, that's just, you're lacking that little bit of concentration. You're looking at the ball, nothing can happen until that guy snaps it. Eight penalties for 58 yards. Ellerson back in the lineup now. Gets a couple of yards on a carry across the Michigan 35. Close to the 32-yard line. This actually is the first time we've seen Ellerson in the second half. And that's surprising because he really is their best back. He's carried 12 times and most of that in the first half for a total of 77 yards. One of those gallops for 42 yards. The other nine yards for the first touchdown in this ball game. Second down and six. Boy, right had a man open. Now he's got Jones off his fingertips. Jones had gone out of bounds came back in and almost made the reception. However, the side judge was there, saw what happened, and threw the flag down. you got to stay in the field of play in order to make the reception, and uh, I don't believe he was pushed out of bounds. If you're pushed out, you can come back. Went out around the eight-yard line, slipped back in around the five, and Wright had plenty of time that time. Yeah, that, the, the signal is that, that the ball is illegally touched, kicked, or batted. And when a player runs out of bounds on his own, right breaks contain out there. Rodney Lyles get, let him get outside. He had two receivers open, and he looks for Michael Jones down the sideline. But Jones had come from out of bounds to inbounds, and he was not shoved or forced out of bounds. That's illegal to try to make that catch. He had a short man, which was his fullback in there, that would have got him the first down. But he was trying to go and try to get some instant points and failed to do so. Third and six. Going deep for Coon. And Coon pulled up short, had a chance for the reception, and failed to hang on to it. Would have been a very tough catch. And once again, the problem is that Randy Wright throws that ball a little short. Had he thrown the ball long and deep and higher, he'd allowed Toon to run under it because he had Cochran by about a half step. Cochran runs by Toon. He has to come back, adjust to the ball, and he just can't make the, make the grab. So right now it's 8 for 22 for a total of 47 yards. Big fourth down and six now for the Badgers. Could be the afternoon for him right now on this play. As Jones open, touchdown, Wisconsin. Now that is a great pass and a great catch. Probably a better catch than pass, but it gets the job done, and we're back in a ball game, Ray. This is not the kind of thing that you want to have happen to you in the fourth quarter. Michigan leading. 32-7, they give a turnover back to the Badgers, and then they go four downs and they're forced to kick, and Wisconsin comes back in their two possessions with two touchdowns. Again, Randy Wright broke contain, threw the ball in the corner of the end zone. He had plenty of time to throw it, and Michael Jones went up and made a great catch. Brody trying to add the 21st point, if he can, for Wisconsin, and does. And so with 7.35 to go in this ball game, Michigan's lead is cut now to 32 to 21. A quick breakfast doesn't have to mean plastic plates and skimpy portions. That's it? And you don't have to settle for... The yay with you all. Now you can have all the breakfast you want at the new breakfast and fruit bar at Elias Big Boy. What could be faster or better than helping yourself to fresh scrambled eggs, smoked bacon and sausage links, crisp home-style potatoes, country fresh biscuits, fresh fruit, and so much more, all for one low price. Enjoy the fresh magic of Elias' new breakfast and fruit bar. Everybody's doing it at Elias Big Boy. Steve Garagiola, seven right, in your there. life. All right, go ahead. You know, kids with diabetes don't have to sit on the bench. They can and should lead active, healthy lives. Just make sure you and your child know the warning signals. Headache, dizziness, loss of energy. These diabetic symptoms can be controlled with the right diet and exercise. To learn more, call your American Diabetes Association. Keep your kid in the game. All right, come on, bring it in. Oh, 
you can't say that Wisconsin has not uh, shown a lot of fortitude in fighting their way back here, especially in the fourth quarter. And Michigan's lead cut by 11 points, and it did not take them very long to go those necessary 50 yards. 32-yard pass was to Michael Jones, number four, who made the reception. But I'll tell you, this is the kind of thing that the Michigan coaches, I'm sure, are extremely upset about. They had this game well in hand at 32-7, similar to last week when they were up by two touchdowns against Washington in the fourth quarter. Wisconsin has scored twice. It's a game. There's only 11-point difference with 7.35 left. That's a lot of time. Bottom to handle a kickoff and floats it down to Giovanni Johnson at his two-yard line. And just driven out of bounds around a 13-yard line. A little costly when he fumbled it there at the two. Slow getting up. I don't know how many times you can say it, but you just can't afford to let a team back in a game. Once you've got them down, you have got to make sure that they are down for good. There's the fumble you're talking about by Gilvani. Comes back outside Wisconsin, fired up because they've scored two touchdowns unanswered. Their defensive people are ready to play, and they're down on that field playing their hearts out. They still think they got a shot at it. And Michigan, the Illapur, to have a costly turnover deep in their own territory. First and 10. Kerry Smith on the carry. Across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Melka is in there for the tackle. Had some help from Belford. Morrow also in there. Effective running today by Kerry Smith. Very effective running, and we asked for that statistic about what Michigan was doing on average per rushing play, and Jim Snyder, our statistician gave us it was 5.5 yards and any time when you can average five yards on the ground over a period of a game that's doing a great job and Michigan is continuing to run the ball well they've got to put together a time consuming drive here and get some points out of it second down on a short yard Gary Smith in that same hole has the first down close to the 30. So he's carried 17 times this afternoon for a total of 86 yards. Now, Jim, you're talking about better than five yards per carry, and that comes in as a better average than what they had their previous two ball games, where they were 4.8. Yeah, and one of the things about Kerry Smith that is very impressive is you watch him, any young football player out there, watch Kerry Smith when he gets into traffic around that line of scrimmage. He puts both hands on the ball. He is not going to fumble the football. Garrett, the fullback on a carry. Quick opening play, and he drives to the 40-yard line. Should have enough for the first down. Clock stops with that measurement at the 41 of Michigan. And Michigan offensively just beating him up inside. There you see the hole. Good running by Garrett as he's slipping around. And there you saw what we talked about before the game, blocking Melka. That time it was Clay Miller, the tackle, that got a chance and shot at number 33, tied him up, and Melk is the guy they had to block today to run, and they have done it. Garrett stays in there with Kerry Smith, the running backs, and Kerry Smith tries the right side this time. Gets across the 45-yard line, close to the 47. Garrett, by the way, has carried seven times in this game for a total of 38 yards. But Michigan's real story was some good crisp blocking, at least through three quarters of this ball game and the, the rushing game, the running game. Exactly. And, and again, I think you've got to go back to the offensive line. There's Diorio, 64, 79, Miller, Dixon, the center, 76, Humphreys. They are the guys that have really done the job up front. Second and four for the Wolverines. And here goes Garrett, trying to get to the 50-yard line, close to it. Has to get to around the 49 of Wisconsin for that first down. Russ Fields in there to make the hit. He's one of the interior linebackers. Fields and Melka, of course, playing like uh, they were taught it. And that is outstanding linebackers. Down to four minutes and 22 seconds. Let's say 77,000. 77,708. Well, they did better than expected. They were talking about... 75,000, so their capacity here this afternoon at Camp Randall Stadium. A couple of yards needed, and Kerry Smith has had first down, driving down to the Badger 45-yard line, and this is what you want to see from the Wolverines' possession 
as they came into this series of downs when they got possession with only uh, four plays in the fourth quarter. And Smith now almost with 100 yards. He has 98 yards in 19 carries. He is such a smooth, steady back, the kind that Bo Schembechler likes to have running for you because he's not going to make the big mistake, and he'll always get yardage and find the hole. He's a smart running back. Lourdes back in there now at left guard. Just sending a pullback through that time. And a good block by Art as he had taken over for DiOrio. Art Valortis in there at uh, the down guard, and he did a good job. And again, that, that's that offensive line. And you see Clay Miller coming back, Dixon, Valortis, Humphreys, Milt Carthens, the tight end. Those guys up front have really done a good job. Mike, it suck it down now and two. Go ahead, Jim. You get a first down play that gains eight yards. You cannot complain. You, that's You're doing a job if yeah. you get that. Garrett and Kerry Smith behind Steve Smith in that eye. And Kerry Smith trying to slip to the outside. Couldn't do it that time. It's a pretty good pursuit as Harrington, the outside linebacker, moving up quickly. So he didn't get the first down. Might have lost a little bit. They run into the split inside, and you see Harrington, number 64, plays off the block of Doug James. And he's the guy that makes the play and stops Michigan short of a first down. Still uh, a couple of yards to go. At the 36-yard line of Wisconsin for Michigan, third and two. The option and the pitch to Kerry Smith. Driven out of bounds at the 34-yard line and should be enough for the first down. Of course, the chain on the opposite side of the field. First down. Good option play into the short side of the field again. Wisconsin overshifting their defense to the field. And Michigan comes wide with the option play. And Kerry Smith once again takes a quick pitch. And that's tough to react to. Then turn up field and get the necessary yardage. Well, the senior from Grand Rapids Forest Hills has himself a 100-day plus. A 21 carries. Kerry Smith now with 101 yards. First and 10. You saw the clock with 2.50 remaining in this ball game. And Kerry Smith going to work again to the 30-yard line of the Badgers. But it's strictly the running game now, keeping the momentum going for the Wolverines. Now it looks like Bo talked to the offensive line on the sidelines, you know, when they got the ball. And he said, hey, this is your game, guys. I'm going to run my tailback, and I'm going to run my fullback, and I'm going to run between you. And you get the blocks, and we'll win this game and hold the ball and work the clock down and maybe get some points. Kerry Smith now coming out, getting a well-deserved rest, and Brian Mercer in there at tailback now. Mercer has seen action earlier here in the fourth quarter at tailback. Second and six. And Garrett going straight ahead, hitting off the right guard. Picks up three or four yards. Brown him on the nose guard in there to make the first hit on him. We saw Clay Miller getting up after he was trying to lead the way for Garrett. So Michigan, third down and about four yards. Really a big drive by Michigan Ray, too, because they really have now closed it out, worked the clock under a minute and 40 seconds. Carthens comes in. Nelson goes out on this third and four, tight end. Smith taking plenty of time on the count and runs it down and he elects to call for time. So he got it down to 126 and then indicated he wanted a timeout. And Michigan leading by a score of 32 to 21. And looking ahead, as you see our vantage point from the press box here at Camp Randall Stadium and the conversation with the coaching staff over there with Steve Smith. Looking ahead to the Hoosiers of Indiana next week, Jeff. Yeah, the Hoosiers involved in a battle with Northwestern today, and uh, that isn't an easy game for either club as they're battling each other. Uh, nobody in the Big Ten you can take lightly anymore, I don't think. Here it is, Wisconsin comes in here down 32-7 in the fourth quarter, and bang, bang, they make it 32-21 and really make a game out of it with Michigan having to come out of their own end and hold the football. So... Ah, we're expecting some fun football games all through this season on the Wolverine Sports Television Network, and we might take this opportunity to welcome our viewers who are in Phoenix watching Michigan football on this 
Sports Television Network of Wolverine football. It might be a little bit warmer down there huh, than it is up here in Madison, Wisconsin. But a pleasant day, though. But a very pleasant day for football. I'd rather play in this weather than I would in Phoenix, where it's 95 degrees. Football players get real tired in that kind of weather. Third down at four yards. Michigan has carried for a total of 330 yards on the ground. Here's Mercer cutting back in. Has the first down inside the 20-yard line. We talk about Michigan's 330 yards on the ground, and we'll compare that to Wisconsin's 110. And remember that 110 yards, 52 of it came on one play. Michigan doing nothing fancy, just blocking people at the point of attack. Mercer, both hands on the football in traffic, running right up and down the field, getting the yardage for the first down. I'll tell you, they've done a real good job up front in this game. Mercer down on seven carries for a total of 47 yards. Wolverines first and 10. That's Garrett in motion. Pitch out to Mercer on the left side. And around the 11-yard line. You saw that man in motion. Of course, he was the man that was trying to lead the block on that side. I'd like to thank right now our spotter for this afternoon, Todd Bryant. And, of course, our fine statistician, Jim Snyder, who keeps us honest. <laughs> and that's not easy. That's on and away from the field. <laughs> or close, he says. <laughs> Come on. Down to 46 seconds. Wisconsin has called a timeout. I think their last gasp now. And, again, again I can't say how impressive it is that Michigan takes the ball. I think it, they got it on their own 12 or 13 yard line after Wisconsin had scored to make it 32 21 and there was seven and a half minutes to go at that point and I'm sure Dave McClain felt hey we got a shot but we got to stop them defensively. So you knew Wisconsin was up. They were ready to play. They had a shot at Michigan if they could stop them without a first down but Michigan has come back with Bo Schembechler and Steve Smith giving the ball really to the tailbacks and fullbacks in the offensive line, and they have eaten up most of that seven minutes and have come out of their own end and come right down the field, all of it between the tackles. There have maybe been two plays called to the outside, sweeps and an option. But the rest of it's been up front, down and dirty, hard-nosed, block and tackle football. Then you're talking about covering that distance of where they started. They have used 13 plays to get down now to the 11-yard line of Wisconsin with 46 seconds to go. Mercer, getting outside, touchdown! So young Brian Mercer chalks up his first touchdown of the season. And give credit once again to the offensive line and a block from the fullback. Here it is. Mercer gets the ball. There's 32. Garrett, watch him, kicks out the end. There's a hole wide open. And Mercer just prances into the end zone after breaking a couple of arm tackles, and they weren't really serious shots at him. But that's just blocking at the point of attack. When you can get that done, get that big a hole for a back, he's got to score. Bob Bergeron in there to try for the extra point with 42 seconds remaining. And his kick is blocked that time. Moving quickly was Richard Johnson in there to block the try for the extra point. So it stays Michigan 38, Wisconsin 21. Now there's some things there that, you know, the game's over basically. Michigan really controls the ball, goes down, scores the touchdown to make it 38. But you don't want to ever have an extra point blocked. Johnson has blocked two field goals as a freshman. Now he comes back and he blocks an extra point here. He's got tremendous speed, but those are the little things that Michigan must work on. As we've seen in the past two weeks, missed field goals, blocked field goals, blocked punts can cost you football games. And in an instant like this, even though they're ahead 38-21, I know that Bo Schembechler is not happy. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. When you talk about uh, little mistakes, you talk about close ball games, that's the difference between a victory or the loss. It could be the difference between a Rose Bowl and some other bowl. I mean, in the Big Ten Championship. And, and so, every year, Michigan plays for the Big Ten Championship, and that's the kind of thing, it's the detail things that cost you games in in uh, tight games. You know, you were talking about Michigan moving those 87 yards and utilizing the clock on that last drive, and our fans could see almost seven minutes there of taking it. 